at this I think point, I, I would be okay <clears throat> with them losing if this freaking match would just be over. I don't care anymore. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's like, let's it's, let's take a step back, okay? Let's breathe, okay? Yeah. There's I mean, no uh, need for that, okay? Yeah, you don't need to be that negative. But at this point, it's just like, please, uh, can I have some more, right? <laughs> like, you're just grasping for more substance from this show. Hello everyone, welcome to the Anime Izakaya Podcast, week 10 of the fall 2020 season. I am your stand-in host, Sredden, aka SB Kuma. With me we have Ku, Yo. Taylor, Hello. and Brian. Hello. We will have Sasha joining us later, uh, he's currently busy in the Netherlands, he'll be back uh, soon. Um, Wait, what? He's in the Netherlands? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> so, um... Okay, but so before we start the podcast, we're just going to talk about like our Attack on Titan plan. Uh, it airs tomorrow, or at the time you're watching this today, or Sunday, and uh, we're going to have kind of like a, just a, our kind of like reaction of the first episode of the fourth season. Uh, also, uh, we're going to get Ku's thoughts on Attack on Titan. He kind of just marathon, well, not the show, but a couple of the uh, was it the the movies that are what's the, recap the term movie. the recap movies. So yep. we're going to get his thoughts over that as well. Um, and then s- during the- this season, Sasha was actually marathoning all of Attack on Titan. So he's I know he's very hyped to talk about it as well. So we'll get people's thoughts um, on as, as well up to that point. And then, of course, we'll go over the episode itself. Uh, it'll be just Attack on Titan. So it'll be a much shorter podcast. We're thinking probably less than 30 minutes. Uh, we're just going to try to change it up, see what happens, and hopefully it goes well. And... After that, we have really the only notable anime news would be Code Geass uh, was announced for a new season. Or, like, just... A new, I think it's... I'm not sure... I didn't actually read the thing over if it's going to be, like, a continuation of, like, where the anime ended. If it's going to be, like, a spinoff. Or if it's going to be, like, just a... Um, or are they just redoing it? Does anybody know? It's more of, like, a spinoff type of thing. Spinoff deal. Okay, gotcha. Yep. See, I think the game you can play like some of the characters from the previous plots, but I think the show is mostly spinoff. Okay, so they're not, so it's not gonna have like Lelouch then. I don't believe so. Hmm. Spoilers. Good time. I'm just asking if he's gonna be a part of it. You know, it's just gonna be before he was alive, or before he was born. You know, or after he became a god. You know, just throw, we'll just throw things in there. Don't listen to me. But uh, besides that, we have no other news for this week. So we will start with Jujutsu Kaisen. Who wants to start? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the, the, on the on the villain. Guys, I am the host. I, I'm basically just bringing it up, and you guys proceed oh. to talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So what do you guys think about the villain? You know, I think he's a pretty interesting take. He's one of those <laughs> villains that you can kind of relate with. Kind of like Thanos, in a sense. But that's just me. Brian? I like his powers, you know. He's like a necromancer dude that turns into. You guys like, are correct. Animals. Your opinions are correct. Yeah, <laughs> we're being tested, and we pass. Koo. High five. Hell yeah. Um, very, I can't. I can't remember everything that happened. I can't remember all the details. So I'll let you guys spearhead this. For me, so nobody else is like tired of just kind of like regenerative abilities in like villains. Like it's anime. Everybody regenerates to some extent. I, I know, but it's just right? like I, it's just annoying, though. It's it's. But there's uh, like a reason for it. Like his ability is to be able to see and like manipulate the soul. Technically, technically, it's not even really regeneration. It, or maybe it is. I mean, uh, I guess it, it is. is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it it makes sense though. So but it's not I'm like okay vampire regeneration or something, you know? Right. Wait, vampires regenerate? <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, they heal quickly and stuff like that. Like all those other... Uh, yeah, some vampires do, apparently. Except if, if, if they get hit by a 2 by 4 Yeah, and, you know, in the heart or something, right? Sure. Yeah. I yeah. think that's uh, how vampire stuff works. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. no, I, I think he's, I think he's uh, a, a well-designed character. Uh, I like his personality, personality. I like his powers. I mean, I think the only person that would counter him and he even brought it up to you would be gojo mm-hmm. right because mm-hmm. if he can't touch you he can't really do much to you mm-hmm. um 
and Gojo, you, you know, you can't get close to his vicinity without, uh, like, that aura, his affinity void yeah. aura mm-hmm. that he has. So, yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. So, I gotta say, he's probably like the strongest villain that's going to appear. I, I can't think of anything that's more strong than that. Wait, wasn't there like another like kind of like zombie looking dude that they showed? Wasn't there, there was two of them, weren't there? At when they were at that um, beach. So, so the guy that the the like. The businessman guy that he's fighting right now, that undead looking dude, that's actually a curse. And the other guy earlier and that like big ass kimono and like his badass attitude, he's like a jujitsu sorcerer of some sort. Okay. Hmm. Gotcha. Well, I mean, it's, I don't know, for me, it's just like, for now, I'm just kind of like underwhelmed with the villain, but it's also at the same time, I keep thinking that maybe this, uh, the guy he's facing is possibly going to die here and I actually want to know more about like about that guy actually and his abilities and like hoping that you know he's uh he'll actually make it out like in one piece in this situation his like i mean it's still like i like, I like his abilities also like just like had like his um was a demeanor where he's just basically he's like oh my god it's like but basically uh, he's talking about like how long he's been working and stuff like that he's like all right he's like i gotta get this shit done by six and then and it, uh, <laughs> i'm not gonna lie when this guy was talking about like he started work at 10 and he's trying to leave at like 6. I'm like, this is definitely some shit that Shrenton would say. Like, this is Shrenton as a character right here. He's like, yeah, I'm going to overtime. And he just powers the fuck out. I'm like, yeah, this is definitely Shrenton. This guy straight gets forced to do overtime. He probably loses his shit. And he's ready to punch the whole wall. That's just flip the desk. Yep. And, That's uh, pretty accurate. Yeah. You know. I don't know. It's so it's like so maybe it's just like a little bit of that. I I don't know. I don't really care about that other guy. That the guy that looks like uh, Lucifer from uh, Devil's a Part Timer. Junpei. That guy. Yeah. I really like Junpei. I'm excited that they have collected him and they're going to be talking to him now. I thought that entire interaction uh, with Yuji was 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 adorable. That's, <laughs> yeah. Thought everything about it was a plus. Yeah, I like the butler. <laughs> the butler. Yeah, the butler's great too. Yeah. <laughs> Even though he's basically like a pointless side character at this point, like every time that guy like just comes up, it's gonna be some sort of com- uh, you know comedy situation or comedic situation. But I think those are the only two things that happened in this episode, right? Wasn't yeah, it's, it's those two things. Yeah, it's basically yeah. like, kind of like the fight, like the the the, the, the talking um, Junpei's back, like, kind of like a bit of his backstory situation. I was actually kind of hoping he was gonna kill that like the the principal. At that, like in that situation, I know me too. <laughs> because it's like, oh man, Arthur, your friends. I'm thinking, man, shut the hell up. You know, you know exactly what the hell. You know, you, you know exactly what's happening. And I just kept thinking, yes, yes, do it. Oh man, did, and they cut I him hit, off. Did it hit you in a feel, Sren? Did it bring up the past? That no, you know, <laughs> no, it was just because like a little bit too close to home, Sren, huh? Is that well, what it is? the thing is, like, you know why? Because because remember they they showed flashbacks that basically he was watching like in the like, in the background of them beating him down. So it's just like, why exactly? Like, are you coming to his house, like, you know, to actually talk to him about these things? Like, what were you gonna, like? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. I don't. I don't think he saw them beat him up. I think he just. I thought. They, I thought he did. No, he he so, saw them hanging out a lot, right? They're together, but he never actually saw him got beat up, and that's why the flashbacks came up. Like, how could you possibly think that they're my friends after what they did to me? Okay, I thought he was basically just kind of being like just a dick and like just joking around with them. Like, oh, it was oh, funny no. how he got beat up by these guys, type of thing. No, so fucked up principle, dude. Yeah, well, that's my bad. That's why I thought, like, oh yes, kill us. Okay, so now I don't feel as bad then. I uh, but so <laughs> so when the guy just got de-pants and then basically he just took off with him, it's like, yeah, okay, that's enough then. No, but I get where he's coming from, right? It's like I, I'm not trying to hate on teachers, but it, I wonder if that philosophy is true to a lot of teachers, right? You never really left that atmosphere, so you don't really know what the real world is like. You mm-hmm. like you have no idea that villains exist in a sense. So yeah. you're just in this like ignorant cloud nine bliss like all the time. Where so you think that, that basically like if a student's acting up, you just think it's because of like, shit at home instead of like or uh, something like that instead of like what could be actually happening at school. Right. You know, you either beat around a bush or you just you know like turn your side like you just turn your attention away from it. Yeah. Um, so I, I can totally get where he's coming from. You know, I really wish that he would have killed him too, but uh, <laughs> to, to be fair, that's not fair to. Uh, I don't know if he's even a principal. Isn't he just a teacher? I have no he's idea. Teacher. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So like I, like it's I find both sides to be okay. Like it's 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 fine that they don't really understand the other point of view. But yeah, yeah. He, I guess it's just because he was like a fat, annoying uh, old guy. It was kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, uh, but I don't know. There's really nothing else. I just hope that this that the that the this the salary man guy doesn't die. 
Yeah, wanna, so I, I, I kind of I kind of need to retract my statement from last week's episode because I thought that his ability that he like he monologued to us, I thought that was all he had going for himself. But yeah, it looks like that's just his like he's fucking nine, with people nine, <laughs> nine to five personality, right? Yeah. Like when he's off the clock, this guy gets really serious <laughs> and he's a lot stronger than he lets on to be. So he is a great one sorcerer. So you know, obviously, he needs to have something that makes him more impactful. Um, but. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I want to say maybe he's going to showcase his true power, but he's still going to die because, you know, if if he's a melee only uh, uh, sorcerer, and this guy is like a good counter to melee uh, commands, uh, I I don't see how he's going to win. Well, yeah, he's they're really not well matched at all, like yeah. you said. So I don't know. I'm still hoping he somehow makes it through. Or maybe like it's one of those like how it always happens with the villains in our favorite sh- show Fire Force where they basically fight and the villains just run away, but it never happens with the uh, like the was it the main the main good guys? It always seems like some sort of fight. If uh, the villains aren't running away, then somebody on the other side dies, and then they move on. Yeah, like unless Gojo somehow knows that he's there and he needs to rescue him, I don't see how he's going to get out. To be honest, can I change the subject quick? Sure, sure. One thing I've always been confused by, even after, like, reading the manga, is I never really understood, like, why Gojo wants Yuji to be dead in everybody else's eyes. Like, why are they doing that? Uh, From my understanding, it's to make sure that he can kind of train in peace, in a sense, and to make sure that he's not targeted anymore. Because I think at this point, no one really knows, uh, like, who knows of, like, his condition, like, his situation. and. Like that draws in like unwanted attention. So, uh, with him pretending to be dead, still he can do this training without any. Uh, what's the word? Disturbing distractions. Interruptions. Yeah, interruptions. Both right? are good ones. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I was just curious because somebody mentioned something about that at some point during this episode, and I once again was like, "Why? Why are they doing this?" Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, this is like a little surprise tactic too. Yeah. You know, and they have yeah. the school, the, the 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 academy thing coming up. Like a little mm-hmm. tournament thing, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I mean, I'm still liking the show, though. Uh, even though, like, I'm still just underwhelmed about the villain. But we'll see. We'll see what my thoughts are if this guy can get out alive. Then get back to me. I, I, I'm slightly biased when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I'm if, not even gonna lie. I don't. I don't think this fight's gonna get drawn out any longer. So. Oh no! If he God dies no. The next episode, then he's dead for sure. But if he survives, I think he'll. He'll, he'll be fine. Yeah, so. yeah. The next episode is basically like, it's going to be the final part of this fight. I, I'm not going to. I can't see this show be like dragging on these fights, especially with like the animation that it has. Like I, I feel like when it has like, like top notch animation, like they they definitely try to wrap up those fights quicker, just because you know it, it, that those are usually the parts that's that soak up the budget. Right. But that's all I really have. Anybody else? Final thoughts? No, no nothing else from me. Okay. We are done with Jujutsu Kaisen for this week. We were then next on the list is High Q. Ooh man! So <laughs> <Don't make that. laughs> wrong season, sir. That was a few seasons back. That season will always stay with me. Anyway, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Like I don't know how you guys felt about High Q, but it wasn't as uh, it wasn't as exciting as last week. I don't know why. It's the animation, sir. Even though I, I like no, the real moment. Was, I don't think the animation was bad at all. Like I'd say it's either of the same quality or just a little bit worse than last week. But I, don't oh, think I actually thought it looked pretty good. See, I didn't even notice it looking bad at any point. They're yeah, really yeah. good at the stand. Like the, the st- like those stand like the still images are like they're so good. But I just wish that that would just be the whole animation. Like the whole anime, you know, like the like the first three seasons. Uh huh. Because like uh-huh. the, oh, go sorry, go, go ahead, guys. No, no, I sorry, I interrupted. I interrupted you. Um. Because, like, the, there was, like, one shot of Kageyama just, that just looked intense. And I thought, damn, man. Like, this guy's just yeah. been in the zone this entire, like, the entire game. Yeah. Like, that's just, that's just, mm-hmm. that's just clutch. And I, I just kept thinking, like, where, like, when he first went up to, like, to serve, just drills it. And then does, like, that fake faint. And even the coach is like, god damn, man, this guy's just on point today. Mm. I don't know, like, just those moments. Uh, also, th- there's some other, like, still images. But I just remember, like, the main one of Kageyama where I was just like, damn, like, that just looks so good. Yeah, it did look really good. I know which one you're talking about. I don't know. I think this whole entire episode was a huge tease. Everybody was so excited <laughs> that Oikawa was going to show up. He was trending on Twitter, apparently. I was so excited. I finally had something to look forward to. I thought I had nothing to look forward to anymore after Nekomo was over. And he was in it for like 10 seconds. 
seconds. He barely even said anything. <laughs> and then the end. Like, I was so mad. And this was after, like, I'd already, like, when the episode started and silver-haired guy with, like, the black low lights, I don't know. When he started talking, the, on the other team, the team that they're playing, that Karasuno was playing against, when he started talking, I was just like, I can't have, I cannot listen to another conversation that just goes over the same recycle bullshit that happens in every single episode now. So I just, like, completely skipped, like, the first half of the episode. Because he talked for a long time. Actually, I, was, I thought his speech was actually really good. But. Was it was it not the same recycled stuff though? No, because no, because oh. the whole time, because the whole. T- oh, sorry, cool. go ahead. No, it's. I feel like it added more depth to the characters. I, I think it was a fine uh, monologue that he had. I guess. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll go back and rewatch. I mean, I, I, like I said, I skipped it, so maybe I'll go back and rewatch it. <laughs> well, because the whole point of it, like that, that actually, because I've always thought like the entire time that I thought it was just one of the dumbest sayings in this show was their little banner that basically says we don't need the memories. I'm like, what the fuck? I was like. I was like, what kind of garbage is that? Like, I, just, I thought it was, like, one of the worst sayings. And this guy's like, he's like, yeah, I don't really like that saying. I was like, thank you. <laughs> I was, Finally, somebody else. <laughs> no. I was like, they get it. Uh, like, uh, but, like, I don't know, like, because uh, cause nobody ever mentioned that saying. Because I just, because like, it just, it sounded so bad. I'm like, I'm thinking, it's like, we don't need the memories. Memories of what? Like, why would you not, like, want to, like, remember, like, these type of things, situations? And this I guy wonder, drops all of that. I was like, yes. I wonder if it's just a bad translation. Because, uh, I wouldn't know, be have- surprised. Japanese people love to just throw English words out there that sound cool, I guess, and then you just kind of take it with a grain of salt. So in country, that, yeah, yeah. Right? we it, don't need the memories. It's a very <laughs> cool saying. <laughs> well, the, well, the thing so is, edgy. yeah, in, in country roll is not really known for their best, like, like for the translations, but well, they're better than Funimation. That's true. Um, yeah. Brian, what, uh, did, did you notice like anything in animation, like, uh, like I guess like thoughts on this episode compared to like I guess the last um, few. I thought it was actually well, better. Last episode, I mean, last episode was pretty fucking hype because you had oh shit, yeah, he not to like step up, but like, but really, I think I think this is like a solid like, I don't know, eight out of ten episode. Um, you had a uh, Tanaka like have a solid spot dude. That was, was like yes, fucking jump over that cliff, you know. And then I was like, damn, that was pretty dope. And then uh, who else was it? It was Asahi. He had a. He was he was rolling for a little bit. I was like, yes, yeah. about damn time, dude. You've been yeah. saying a hundred percent for like the last forever now, and you finally hit hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I don't know why he keeps saying that. It's right weird. on the corner. Well, because I think I think it was just a, like a matter just to tell people like, hey, this is his version of like him ramping up, you know? And he's yeah. been at a hundred percent for like the last what two sets. <laughs> well, the thing <laughs> so is like, like the, yeah. The, well, the thing that they kind of mentioned too is basically like he was like he was one of the players that actually like gets more warmed up as the game goes. So basically, he has like a slow start. And he basically gets like in the zone. Mm. <clears throat> so, 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 Brian, I think that's kind of like what the the whole thing is when he was basically like you know saying 100. percent Maybe he could. I think he was definitely hyping himself up though. I think he just kind of kept like in his in his uh, in his head, just thinking like he's just got to get to that, or he just kind of like how you know like Deku like hyped the shit out of himself with his a uh, million percent or whatever. I think yeah. it's, it's it could be because he definitely seems like a like a mo- like a mentality like a mentality dude. Like he seems like he's like he like he's the type to get skittish. And he kind of needs like that put and like that push to kind of like get going, or just to yeah. have the game go longer. It could be that he's like as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I there's definitely some moments in this match or this uh, episode that I thought they were just I thought they were just gonna straight up lose right here. I just kept thinking like, holy shit, they're actually gonna lose right here. And then uh, cause like the one where basically <clears throat> where Hinata went up to get the ball, but then it basically like dropped over the net, and it was between him and Kageyama. And I thought, I thought, I thought, well, rip, and then he kicks the ball over. And then, uh, that was no, the end of that. Like, the point that made me think that they're going to lose was when, uh, Kageyama shot a set over the, uh, to Tanaka, and then he got blocked. Oh. I thought, it was, like, that was my point. But, yeah. Uh, it was a nice surprise that, yeah, Nishinoya finally showed up this, this time, you know? Like, he was able to save all the balls that would have ended the game for them. So. Yeah. I don't know why you guys have been thinking this whole time that they're going to lose. Because, like, at the beginning of <clears throat> part one, season four, part one, they introduced us to that other character that went to one of their camps that they highlighted for some reason. The one with the white hair and the crazy eyeliner. You know who I'm talking guy? about? Yeah. The other short guy? Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, we haven't seen that guy again. Like, obviously, they're going to have to go up against that guy before they lose. Otherwise, why would they have even had him in the beginning? Set up for the future. Yeah. 
Taylor, there's a lot of things that I have questions for with this show, but I don't think any of them are going to get answered. <laughs> Who's already? He's already like submitted. He's like, I'm not gonna get shit. It's like it's over. <laughs> I think point, I, I would be okay with them losing if this freaking match would just be over. I don't care anymore. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> it's like, let's it's, let's take a step back, okay? Let's breathe, okay? Yeah. There's I mean, no uh, need for that. Okay? Yeah, you don't need to be that negative. But at this point, it's just like, please, uh, can I have some more? Right? Like, you're just grasping for more substance from this show, but. Yeah, I don't know, because like I said, I, I don't see how, if this is the last animated season that we're going to get from Q, I don't know why they're putting all of this emphasis on this one team, when they clearly have Nekma coming up next, which is going to be even more hype than this match, right? I mm-hmm. I don't see what they're what they're doing with the materials they, or the potential that they have. They could easily start another season. You know, they could easily just announce at the end of this one that, you know, season five coming soon. Yeah, maybe this can get the attack and titan treatment, right? Like after five years, you, sh- oh, you show another season, and then and then after that, they start throwing out more and more at you. Um, but I don't think Brian oh, could wait another five years for another show. <laughs> no, 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 no. But the one before season four, that was the four to five year wait. See, now that we're we're getting the ball rolling again, right? More seasons will be thrown out there. Hopefully, okay, we'll see. I, I hope though yeah. that if, if they decide that to basically kind of go back to like the original teams or just kind of more of an animation, because like I mean the, the last couple episodes are definitely like because from what we've seen or what we've what we've gotten this season, it definitely mm. has been very underwhelming it, it, except maybe a couple episodes like the main like that Rio episode I thought was top notch. Other than that, I can't really think of one off the top of my head, but it's like. Because like I mean like at this point like I'm I'm like I'm fine with like the animation we're getting but I'm gonna assume that I really hope they have like another like like hype epic point you know how like, it seems like every s- season has that but it's more of like what will the animation look like and then will that ruin it also the music has been very jazzy which definitely does not fit what we've been getting it's a god awful it's I not hate good. It. It's well, uh, I mean, it's it's okay. I feel like they're just trying something different, kind of like with the new opening and a new uh, end end credits. Uh, and, and the new team music. for the animation. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. Maybe they're just trying something different. Ugh. I mean, music's not what you're coming here for. As long as it's such, but it helps. Properly. Well, it's not what we're coming here for, but right, it does right, right. the mood. It makes things more epic. Yeah. With, but well, not this music, but. You know? Right, but I think they've been doing fine with uh, the last episode, not this episode, but last week's episode, and uh, that that one episode where they had Ryu showcase like his yeah. uh, his abilities in a sense. So mm-hmm. yeah, the, the animation was like really good in that one. I mean, the, even like the, the the Ryu moment in this episode, I thought was awesome as well. Just because yeah. like any kind of like, hype moment with Ryu or Nishinoya or any or real honestly anybody on on Crossno, I'm up for it now. At this point, just because I'm tired of seeing the other fucking team, because <clears throat> it feels like just like how like the points are going, like they're just kind of just doing normal points. But then mm-hmm. every time they seem like the other the other team scores a point, they make it just look epic as hell with the twins. When I just mm-hmm. don't really care about that anymore because we've seen it many times now. But it's well, I'm sorry, I'm kind of like skipping around, but no, ahead, I mean, well, to be to be fair, it, you gotta have the villain be somewhat uh, interesting, right? They kind of. You can't just have the MC be the cool guys like, I mean, all around. I mean, they kind of messed it up already, though. We got, like, a little yeah. bit kind of backstory with them. They have two episodes left. We're not getting any more right. backstory from them. I think it's over. Yeah, they're, they're just not interesting. Yeah. That's all it is. They're just not interesting. Yeah, so I don't know if they're just skipping it over in the anime. Or if I'm assuming that the manga probably went into more detail. I'm just, I'm assuming. Because I, I think she's a way better, like, writer than what the anime is showing us right now this season. Because all the other seasons were, I think, solid. Um, mm-hmm. like, I was telling, uh, like, I was telling Taylor, too, like, I, like, this is my least, like, like interesting team, I think, uh, I just don't care about, like, I, I mean, uh, or, d- d- uh, which one did you care le- least about, this one, or was it season three? Who, me? Yes. Or actually, like, everybody. I, I guess, like, I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest, I loved season three, and I thought, like, the last couple, you know, whatever, the last couple episodes were, were, were super epic. In the beginning, I liked it and thought it was interesting, but there were episodes in the middle there that I also got kind of bored by. Like, I just think a whole freaking season no, no, for I just one meant, match. I just meant like the, just... the 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 opposing teams. Like, which one did you hate oh, the oh, most? Oh, yeah. oh, I like this team way more. The characters are way more interesting and better looking. Uh huh. <laughs> Brian, oh. cool thoughts. No, no, not like basically like on you know appearances, but it's more of like uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess favorite. what was your least favorite? I guess like do you like this team that they're facing more or less than let's say just say it's season three. 
I, I forgot uh, who they were facing in season three, honestly. The, Tarizawa. It was like the r crazy guy with the red hair like, and then like, the other guy that looked brute like he was strength. Dirty. Yeah. Do you remember, mm -hmm. Brian? I, mean, I, I think, <laughs> on. I have to I think look. they're all fine, to be honest. I think the one that I didn't care for at, at, at all the most was probably the uh, Dati Tech. The one oh, okay. Had, yeah, I'm not even putting them in this. No, <laughs> no, no, I, I'm just basically saying, like, the final teams that they face, like, in each season, you know, like, where it's, like, the epic team. Oh, the, kinda, like, the thing oh. is, I think, I think season three was <clears throat> more epic. I feel like those players seemed, like, stronger. I feel like they seemed more talented. For whatever reason, this, this team just doesn't seem like a big deal to me. I don't know why. They, but, like, personality-wise, I, I like the characters more of this season. Well, I think it's just because they haven't gone, like, really into any backstory with this new team. Like, we don't know them, really. Besides, like, the twins, and even that's, like, surface level. Like, they really haven't gone over, like, anybody else. <clears throat> um, yeah. But, Brian, do you remember the team now? Uh, this team? The one with uh, the, the red hair guy, where he basically just, like, randomly... <laughs> Right, he basically just like randomly blocks, and he's just like he just takes the chance. Oh, on uh, yeah, on Shiratorizawa, right? Yeah, dude, I love that team. Bro. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, because I, I actually like that team more than this one, just because like. Oh hell yeah, dude! <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. You legit like yeah. listen, like they were facing literally a titan of a person on that <laughs> team, and it's like you can't really beat that, right? This dude was literally ranked number one for like two years in a row or some shit. Like this dude was the titan he was the <laughs> guy to beat so yeah it's like this, these twins ah, they ain't got shit on that guy they, they just made him like so much more like uh like like they such made like... him seem like the boss yeah, yeah basically the end game yeah they, these they... two are just like yeah they're whatever yeah like they like uh, yeah they're basically just like the twins like but it makes it seem like they can easily they're not easily but they can beat them easier than like the like the, the the titan the Titan guy, because yeah. that, that like that, that first strength, like everybody just looked like what the fuck, like they. I think I think a big part of it also like the animation helps with that as well, just like the impact and the effect. Um, because no, I don't think it's really the animation. I think it's just the fact that they're not emphasizing the strong points. Well, I agree. well, I know. I mean, like in the animation, I mean, like 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 their like facial features and basically like, those like those like impact of the moments where, with like just like how the characters are shown. But I just feel like there's, like, way more in-depth. Because, like, a lot of those, like... Because the, the still shots in this season that look so good are, like... It's basically, like, the quality of, like, the entire season three. Where it just looked like all those, like, all those, like, impacts and, like, they had, like, like major effects. But I don't know. Uh, that could be just me. I, I don't really know. Yeah, I think you're putting too much emphasis on the animation. I don't really think the quality of it matters as much. It's just, can you get the point across with your, uh, with your mm -hmm. animations? Um, and yeah. I think it's just the fact that they're not emphasizing the key points of each person like they did in yeah, season that, two, that's right? basically yeah you have that and it's really unfair too because i think the best finals team that they fought so far or the best nemesis they've they fought would be uh the one team from season two oikawa uh, oikawa right yep. just because i feel like they have more airtime they have more we got uh, to know them for two seasons yeah the yeah. rival aspects so yep. they got two seasons and you got shiro torizawa who was kind of there in season two but then they had all of season three to kind of showcase like who they are and like why they're so strong yeah right and then with, with these guys they're getting like part of season four part two but even then i feel like they're rushing it so they're not uh, being showcased as well as they could be i think because if you think about it these guys will be stronger than shiro torizawa just because they're more of a of, of a better unit yeah right shiro torizawa was kind of just all based on uh Ushi, uh that that one guy so yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't think it's really fair, to be honest. That was very well put. Yeah, but yeah, sorry, but we're kind of going off on <laughs> like, to, like tangents with different seasons. Does anybody else have like any kind of like end points? Because it, it basically ended on a like a kind of a fair cliffhanger. So I would assume that the match will be over next episode. Yeah, I, I thought the episode was just more of a just set up for the next. Uh, for the next episode, um, well, but we got like, kind of like the inner monologue with basically like, the whole thing with uh, with Ryu though. Basically, he's just like he's like I'm gonna need you to hold back on me. Kagami was like, Nah, man, <laughs> I'm gonna go to you whenever I feel like type of thing. I that, but I don't feel like he deserves <clears throat> another episode. For oh this no, episode. Ryu's done. No, I don't think he's gonna get another moment. I think it's I think it's gonna be Kagami and Hinata moment at this point. Oh, but that's what I'm saying. Like they should have spent that one like five minute segment of like Ryu right having that that epic uh, moment of his of jumping across or leaping across the the mountain or whatever yeah uh 
They could have spent it on. Um, oh, I keep forgetting his name. The guy that was serving uh, the the other third year that was serving the hundred percent guy. Oh yeah. Um, the the hair bun guy. Asahi. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they could have, on they could have uh, spent time on uh, Daichi. Right? Yeah, right. They could have spent more time on those characters, develop the team, right? But I don't know why they're giving so much like care to to Ryu in, in a sense. That's fine. I actually like love Ryu because well, the thing is, Ryu Ryu has never got like any kind of like, moments until like this season though. He's been kind of just like that guy, or just right. Yeah. No, I, I get that, but he's he's more just uh, he's as normal as Daichi, right? But why is it that uh, he's getting more airtime than Daichi? And I don't think he... he's more normal than Daichi. I think Daichi is like you can because he's like the ace, and you expect high things from the ace. No, Asahi's right. the yeah, captain. Asahi's Daichi, Daichi. Daichi's the captain. Oh, yeah. wait, what? He's like the yeah, de- Daichi, he's like yeah. he's like the ultimate defense. Daichi, he's yeah. ba- or he's just like the all around this solid solid. Uh, oh, Daichi, player. my bad. Yeah, I'm just mixing up names. Yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> So Asa, he's an ace, right? But why don't you give him yeah. more, more airtime, right? And then if you think about it, last week's episode, they were more focused on Hinata. Like, you just brought up the fact that Hinata can now see the ball, make plays, and, you know, defend. So that's what saved you the game. Why aren't you focusing more on that with this episode? Why did you just throw that in the backseat? So, so I thought that was kind of weird. Yeah, so let me counteract with the third years. Because basically, it's like their last year. They're already, like, they're not going to be learning anything new. It's a, so basically, they're already kind of like the solid players. Like they they are who they are. But like the, the other like first year, second years, like they basically have like room to grow. They're still learning like new abilities, new new ways. So I think that's why they're not really focused on them. Um, because I just feel like Asahi is he is who he is. Daichi's like the all around captain. He's basically uh, instead of basically just kind of like hyping everybody, keeping everybody together. I think that's about where they're gonna be. I mean, I still kind of hope that they have like epic points. I still want that. But I don't need I don't need them to kind of like go and have like that explanation of being like you know, like all of a sudden just going going out of their comfort zone. Which I'll take it. I'll t- honestly, I'll take anything from Krasno. But I just think that's that's probably why they're not nearly as focused on it. But I wouldn't be surprised though if like the final point is like a mixture between like you know, Hinata does like another block, Nishina does like his like long kind of like or where he jumps forward type of thing and sets it up type of. I wouldn't be surprised if they all like they try to like hype up like the last final point if it's like something like that. But this time Hinata gets it in. Mm, yeah, I suppose. I don't really know what to expect at this point, so that's yeah. kind of the. I'm just throwing stuff out, you know. I'm just kind of hoping. <laughs> yeah. But at this point, I'm actually hoping that uh, Krasno does not lose. But uh, I will not I be mean, completely I'll... destroyed like Brian. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they are at this point with how they showcase the match, how, how they're like setting that. everything up. Yeah, which you actually made a really good point with the the owl guy. Like, what was the point of showing all these characters if not? Be... But I still think it could be setting up stuff for the future. But that would also suck because it's it would take so long to get to that point again. I don't know if if they do it in two seasons or three seasons, it's it's fine. But I really can't see them make another uh, season of this. No, of, of this of this match. No, no, just haiku in general. Oh, just haiku in general. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully for the future. Wait, what? You don't think they're gonna make another season of haiku? No. What? Well, even even if Krasno wins, though. Yeah, what makes you think they're gonna like do another season to I mean, finish out like the finish finals. nationals? <laughs> nationals. Uh, I feel like if they were to do that, they wouldn't have spent all of part two on this match. I, I have part no two idea. of season three. No, season, season four. four. Season, four. season four. Oh I, Jesus! I, I mean, feel like they're gonna have more too. <laughs> yeah, I personally think that they're gonna keep going to like season five until nationals are over. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I hope that they. I hope they continue. I mean, definitely, like, we, I've mentioned so many times with just animation and just certain things, but I'll be done with that. I mean, I would, I would hope so, too, right? Because, like I said, I really love the show and I want it to get more, but I, I just don't see how it's going to happen, especially with after a long hiatus. I don't know. Well, I, we'll I, see. I, I, I hope they keep it going. Yeah. It's, like, the only sports game I, like, actually watch. There's yeah. some... Never mind. I was going to say there's some other good ones, but I don't watch any of the other ones, so... <laughs> Never mind. That, all right. Yeah, I know. What I'm yeah. talking about. I'll, I'll stop there. But I'm I'm done. Anybody else has anything else? No, I'm good. I hope I'm wrong. Right, it's fine. I hope I'm wrong. I hope they make same. More. If they I lose, don't. if they lose, Brian, I expect you to be on this podcast. Bombs <laughs> <laughs> dude. But you can have your tears in the hand. You know, whatever or tear or not tears, tissues in hand if needed, or any or anything else uh, to help you get through uh, that I, that terrible if time. If they lose. 
when I'm on the next podcast after they lose, dude. I'm legit just gonna be so speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I legit won't say anything. Well, we're, we're gonna give you the floor first. I'll, I'll, I'll let David know if he's hosting at that point. That's gonna be a really long silence, then. <laughs> anyway, we'll worry about when we get to that point. But okay, uh, that was. Uh, we will wrap up with Haikyuu there, and then the next one we'll be going on to is Higurashi. Okay, so man, this episode hurts you in in a way that I can't describe. Um, I I know maybe you don't like Satoko as much, uh, Taylor, but man, this one just. Oh, it was almost unwatchable. Like it was unbearable to watch with how, how the. Oh, it was almost the, unwatchable. The, so that it was but, unwatchable uh, to watch with how. how why the, don't you tell us what happened this week? Uh, well, basically, we we learned that her uncle has has moved back to the village, and we, he's not a very great guy. You learn more about what happened to her parents. They both died. I forgot how, but they died, mm-hmm. and um. After they had died, that's when they had originally been placed under her on un- uncle's care. They mm. were basically abusers. And, but at least at that time, Satoko had her brother, Satoshi, right? That's his name? Yep. Mm. Yeah. So at least they had each other. But then Satoshi disappeared or left town or depending on who you ask, it seems to be slightly different for each person. And... um and so, but that was fine because Satoko then moved in with Rika and they had each other and at least she wasn't with abusers anymore. Uh, but then now her uncle has come back. So he's dragged her back with him and started the same cycle. You also learn, I thought of something while I was talking about that, but I forgot what it was. What am I missing, Ku? Oh, so there was actually like a weird twist to it. Like the reason why Satoko... Um... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I remembered halfway through. <laughs> okay. No, no, so go ahead. Yeah. Um, so it turns out, too, that what had happened, she already lied. She, she, actually, no, you explain it because I, I can't remember. You explain it. <laughs> All I right. can't so, remember. I thought, I thought it was weird and I didn't like it. Yeah. So apparently, uh, Satoko's, um, at the time, it, uh, Satoko's father at the time wasn't really her father, it was like her stepfather or whatever. Um, because I think her her real her biological father passed away, so she remarried, and then that's uh, like the uncle that she's living with now is actually the remarried guy's brother, and mm-hmm. apparently she uh, faked a call saying that she was getting abused or whatever from the guy, and uh, that's kind of why they have this situation. I think it's kind of revenge, right? Because she called child protective services against the uh, the father at the time, and he got taken away or whatever, and now that they're living with the uncle and aunt. Uh, they're that's why they're abusing them so that's why as of right now they've tried calling child protective services on the uncle twice but they don't really seem to care as much so you're kind of confused as to why but this is because of that because of a like a, a boy who cried wolf situation mm-hmm. again so mm-hmm. and i think the whole reason i i do agree with you that it is painful to watch mostly just because i mean well this shit happens in real life right mm-hmm. and so it's 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 just very depressing I think the the only reason it bothers me is just because it's a lot of background, like just a lot of background to convey a pretty simple concept. I just didn't think there needed to to have it be that complicated for her history. Um, mm-hmm. And even that would be fine, except that, I mean, it just feels out of tune with the show. Because I mean, I don't, I don't think this is spoil. I really don't think it's spoilers. Because honestly, I mean, I would feel this way even if I hadn't seen the original. It just doesn't really seem to fit in with the themes of the show. And so I think that it was like, if they're going to go into this, I feel like it deserves more time, like just like more time to focus on it and do it a l- without like such an information dump. Is how I feel. Um, and then the very ending where she breaks down. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see what they say about that. I thought that was odd. I didn't love it. I don't know, Ku. What do you think, bro? I saw. I don't know why I keep eating when I watch this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, oh yeah, that's right. Cause she, yeah. My, my jaw dropped, and I was just like, yeah. "What? What just happened? Like that's yeah. crazy." And I've seen enough of uh, certain shows to kind of get a feel of what might have happened, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so basically, uh, Kate was gonna like. You know, pat her on the head for yeah. whatever reasons, and then she she bat away his hand, and she started like just puking for some reason, 
And then she went to like this hysterical state where she kept apologizing. She ran off to like some part on the floor and she just kept trying to apologize to somebody or something. So uh, it was it was pretty intense to watch. And then there was no music or whatever. So basically all you're hearing were just the the sounds that she was producing or like the things she was saying as she was like running around frantically and like apologizing and whatnot. So I, I thought that was pretty eerie in itself. And then mm-hmm. like for the for this arc alone, it's only been two episodes, but you don't really notice any like major tonal shifts that you would get from the other eight episodes. So I wonder if that's like if this is going to be the tonal shift of of this arc, right? Just the the highlights of the uh, behavior that she's showing or the breakdowns that she's going to have. So, yeah, it could very well be. I I feel like that last part where she does have her breakdown, I feel like that wasn't in the original, and so that's why it took me aback so so much. I mean, I'm sure she had a something similar ish in the in the in the original, but it was not like that. And so I think the only thing that I want from it is I hope that they weren't just like, I hope that they weren't just like, I don't, I, we still, I mean, I can assume that he's like, you know, hitting her or whatever. I can maybe assume that more than that is happening. I don't really know, but Mm -hmm. like, I just hope that it gets explained like why there was that such intense reaction right then and there. It was, it was Mm -hmm. just, it just didn't really feel super authentic to me. It felt forced. Um, what do you mean? Like the the way she I've reacted? I've never or... seen any person react to to something like that, no matter how, like... I mean, now that I've had a lot of experience with this, I'm certainly <laughs> not a caseworker, but I have known people who have been in these situations before, and that is not how they responded. So it uh... just felt really, really extreme and, like, out of nowhere. It'd be one thing if, like, um, what's his face? I forget. Keiichi hadn't uh... already, like, done that, like, a million times before. Right. It's not like it was, like, a stranger. It's not like she didn't see it. Cu- like, it, it was just really, it to me, it felt forced. But, I mean, I, at this point, I'm just, like, splitting hairs. It's not a big deal or anything. It just it was just, it just threw it off for me. That's all. I mean, yeah, like I said, I'm not an expert in the subject either, but I yeah. would imagine everyone responds to it differently, I suppose. Yeah. And depending on how severe it is, uh, I can only imagine, you know, like whatever, like whatever the worst thing you could think of happening, that's probably the situation or the case here. Um, yeah. And I forget sometimes that she's as young as she is too. Right. But, like, you I, know, I, and then, like, do just we know how old she's supposed to be exactly? No, but the, like on a side tangent, like the thing that I don't really like about the show is the fact that like the character models, like all the girls in Keiichi, sometimes they're really short and like chibi like, and then the next scene they're like really like tall and slenderish. And to me, it's kind of weird because you don't really get a consistency of like, uh, hmm. like their children or their teenagers or whatever, right? You can't really like pinpoint how old they are or how they're supposed to react, which is weird. You know, I hadn't actually noticed that. <laughs> Yeah, because like especially with Sotoko, right? In the last week's yeah. episode, I felt like she was a little bit taller and slender as she was like cooking in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. But with this episode, when Keiichi was trying to pat her on the head, she felt like it felt like she was a lot shorter mm-hmm. or smaller than she normally was. Mm-hmm. And like when she was like throwing that, uh, like having that that episode, uh, it, it felt like she was a lot smaller or childish than she normally is. Well, I mean, maybe that's something they're doing on purpose. Uh, you maybe. Think? Maybe I've noticed. I think it's weird, but it's it's possible. Yeah, I haven't I haven't even noticed, so I can't comment on that at all. Yeah. When it comes to animation for the show, I definitely don't really pay too close of attention. Oh, I, <laughs> I, mean, I, really don't I, pay att- I pay attention to like certain things, but that's just not one of them that I've noticed. Yeah, I don't know. It's just something that bugged me. Uh, I I don't know why, but yeah. Uh, also, oh, and yeah, the cop. Sorry, oh, go ahead. No, no, actually, I was going to talk about him, but go, but go ahead. Yeah, the cop showed up this time, and uh, he. What did they refer to him as? The um, the fami- um, the familiar, the familiar of that of the guy. Of that, of that, I can't remember spirit? that name. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, of the demon or a spirit. Yeah, yeah, of the demon, and I thought that was interesting. Um, that's the first time that he's been por- uh, portrayed that way. And oh my god, did he seem super creepy in this episode? <laughs> <gasps> yeah, like it makes him go. Like I kind of liked it better when he was just a bad detective, but now it goes from <laughs> like a bad, right. It goes from a bad detective to oh shit, this guy means business, you know. Yeah. Like, where were you, episode one? Like the fact that he was able to like 
scare the children or mm-hmm. kind of like uh uh in, like intimidate keiichi and then you know and then the fact that he was able to like hurt keiichi but not leave a bruise uh mm-hmm. shows that you oh, know he's done it before right mm-hmm. so yeah this totally brings him in a different light so i don't mm-hmm. I don't know if this was intentional or if he's if this is like the one off and he's actually a good cop. But with this ep- uh, episode, it makes it look like he's a bad guy. So, mm-hmm. I don't yep, know. I thought that was very interesting change. So, so they didn't do this in the original. No, they had that in the original too, but I I for, I had forgotten. So, oh, okay. and even regardless of beyond forgetting, like just the way that they executed it here was was very flawless. I liked it a lot. Mm. It just, he felt very ominous. Like, I, I think out of a lot of the things that have happened in the show, just the way he acted, like the way that he was talking about Satoko and the way that he threatened um, Keiichi and all that stuff was just so creepy. And it, it, it's unlike the, a lot of the other stuff in Higarashi. Again, it's creepy in a way that's actually relatable to real life. Like, mm-hmm. you know, this, well, we're talking about it every day now with, with the news and stuff. But yeah, it's, it's something that people can actually... <laughs> deal with in real life so that makes it even scarier so i like that yeah no that's nice but you're right i do kind of miss like the bad detective jokes <laughs> yeah uh i don't know i guess this is why you shouldn't piss off the detective right i mean he is still a detective no matter how bad he may seem so yep um I'm trying to think i think that's everything that i had for this week yeah yeah, other than seeing what's going to happen next week, uh, there's really not much else to talk about. Um, but man, it's totally, totally crazy about what's happening right now. So mm-hmm. make sure you don't eat for the next one. For I can't help one. it, right? I watch anime when I get off work, so I'm hungry, so I'm eating, and it's just, <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't help that on Thursday, right? That's the only show that I'm watching. So that's the first thing I watch when I get back. So I just feel. If, it, if it's anything like the original, you're really not going to want to eat during the next couple of episodes. Yeah. Just don't do it. Just go prepared. The thing that makes me think it's not just physical abuse is the fact that she puked the, uh, in the beginning. Um, I feel like there may be drugs or something else of nature that was like intro- like was like was added to the abuse. Because um, the thing that I remember, too, was actually in the beginning of the last episode when the uncle was introduced... It showed a bag with his name on it that was like from a pharmacy. Mm-hmm. So it's possible that maybe he's also drugging her as well with the abuse. Um, and be. I think and I think that's why maybe she puked first during the uh, the episode that she was having. So yeah, that's really well sp- uh, well spotted. That very well could be. Yeah. So I don't know. That's that's just my observation. But I think that's it for me. Man. Yeah. That's it for me. That sounds like a great <laughs> show, guys. <laughs> like I'm so glad I don't watch this show. Such <laughs> happy oh, times. What the hell? <laughs> Dude, like, last, no, the last episode was so chill, right? It was kind of creepy. It was, yeah, it was creepy, so cute and sweet. But it was, it was, was kind of cute, right? Just a bunch of yeah. kids, like, oh, you know, like my big brother went away, but uh-huh. you can be my big brother now. I'll cook mm-hmm. for you. Let's just have fun, mm-hmm. you know. Like the last episode, it did a complete 180 at the end, and then this yeah. episode just like ran that full force. Like, it was, oh, it's so crazy. Sounds like that's a common thing with this show. Like, it's, like, the first, like, it's basically, it's, like, lulls you in this, like, a false sense of security. And then yeah. it just blows yeah. the doors right off. Definitely. It was just, like, so sad this time, too, because, like, you got so attached to her in the last episode. It was so sweet, their relationship was. And then it just got, everything just got so ugly this episode. It hurt, it hurt more. Yeah. Than the shifts in previous, in, uh, previous arcs. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Great times in Higurashi. We're, we're we're really done now. Great, yeah, done. great times. It is a great time. You should watch it. Oh yeah, definitely. I'll get I'll get <laughs> right on that. Uh... That one episode. Even I'm scared to even look at this show. Dude. Like, <laughs> Wait, which one? The one they were just talking about here. Oh, that one. Okay, this one. I thought I thought you like, like looked you know, into the show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. I keep hearing the name Higurashi. You guys are like, yeah, it's a great show. You know, it's great little. Kids running around having fun and stuff, and then this episode comes out. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Are they yeah. Watching? All of a sudden, Machete comes yeah. out of nowhere, and there goes the kids. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, that's what makes the show good, though. It's good. It, it's gotcha. Like, on like this different <laughs> spectrum, like every other episode, I guess. Uh-huh. But that's what makes it enjoyable, I guess. Oh, enjoyable, yes. I love these I love these terms that are being dropped in this show. It, it makes, yeah, it definitely makes me want to watch this show. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. yes, yes, yes. Anything else? Thoughts, Brian? No. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm no. just checking. I, I wasn't sure. Okay, all right. <laughs> we'll be done with Higurashi then. Okay, and then we will do Damachi. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can start us off, Saren. Uh, Well, this is basically... Well, the, the previous episode, I actually thought that was going to be the episode to set up this time. But it seems mm-hmm. like this episode was more of like setting up for next episode. Where right. uh, it's it so far seemed like all the, like everything was going according to plan, like uh, everything was going well, and then of course uh, Vine ends up falling and getting split from the group. Mm-hmm. Uh, but dude, yeah, th- my favorite part of this episode was definitely when Bell walks in there and basically just like the wife is just kept kind of rolling in there, and it's kept like just like the whole situation. I just thought it was hilarious. I was like, oh yes, return to the du- return to uh, um, is it right to pick up girls in the dungeon? Even though this is nothing to do with the dungeon. Bro, but it, it wasn't even that. It was just the uh, the reaction from Ice was so good, dude. Like <laughs> I thought she was gonna flip or something, like get jealous and just hop down there. I mean, she kind of seemed like that because Belle, even Belle's like, "Oh man, she's staring dag- not these these terms, but she's like, oh, she's right. staring daggers at me, basically. Like yeah. where she's just like, uh, she wasn't like, there was no way she was just gonna lose, or he was gonna lose her like in this situation because they just kind of kept rolling in. Right, dude. I wish we would have gotten to know Naza so much more. Like Naza, like is. I don't know. Nazo just seems so. It's just so cool. It just sucks that they cut her out completely from the second season to actually mm-hmm. get to know her, because like, like, uh, just like her, like, uh, her personality and everything. Like, like it's like one of my favorite, like, t- like type in characters where they're just kind of like really, kind of like where they're just like 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 was it slower? They're very chill, and then they yeah. like I, I just like like love that personality or like that in in anime. So I mm-hmm. really wish we would have been able to get, uh, kind of like her her part from uh, that we got cut out from the second season. Which was too bad. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I guess I think the the one that I wish would have more airtime would be Ana, like uh, Bell's advisor, whatever. Yes. From the guild. Yeah, her too. Yeah, I thought she was pretty cute this episode. Just her personality, the way she was reacting to Bell. Yeah, and then just like the, like the words and like Bell's like, oh man, you got you have to like word this differently. Like you make it sound like like just like I, I thought the subtitles were just like sp- like I think they were just spot on. With that whole, just like the whole convers, like just that whole conversation with that, um, God, who 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 was it? I was actually kind of hoping we were gonna see like a little bit of the fight between Ryu and Eyes. I would actually kind of, I would like to see that just to see like what kind of like what level that is. Oh, even that's even probably next episode, right? I mean, I don't know if we're really even gonna see it though. Just mainly because like, uh, I mean, Ryu got beat up, by, got beat by the Minotaur. So I mean, I just don't think it's gonna be much. I don't think we're even gonna get it. I think it's gonna be cut. Like, like the no, fight. No, she's powered up now. She's powered up by Haruhime. Oh shit, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're on par, kind of. Thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Honestly, I would, I would still really hope to see that part, but this is JC staff, so it could go either way. They could completely cut it out, or they could actually like show decent animation and, and show us. You know, to defend JC staff, they have been doing a pretty good job. Yeah. This no, I, I'm. So, I've been very so maybe, surprised. Maybe keep them some slack, huh? Yeah. Have some hope. That, right? but, dude, like, so. there's how like I think it was in the first couple episodes where we're just like, dude, this is actually pretty good. Like, yeah. So I'm actually like I don't know if like the, the bar was set so low from the second season, and where I'm just thinking this is like so much better. But I honestly think that this season is 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 just way better. Like I actually like this season more than the first season. I think, um, just oh. like just how it's going. Uh, I mean, all, all jokes aside, I I don't think it's the fact that the bar was set so low. I just think that it's they're finally doing it right. They're I focusing think. on the story instead of just skipping it like crazy, or uh, they're hey, like. The pacing is there. The impact yeah. is there. Yes. You know, characters, you know, like they're they're spot on. So right, yeah, yeah. So like everything about that is just awesome. Um, I'm kind of wondering what uh, Ana's uh, bangle or arm armlet does, like uh, because you know she was supposed to give it to him, but the thing doesn't come off. So I don't know. So I'm assuming Hermes has some sort of plan. I'm guessing it was meant to happen like this. I'm like I would assume. I would imagine so, yeah. Like, I, like, I don't know what... It, like, I, I love Hermes, too. Like, the, the guy always ha- has, like, his own kind of, like, plans going on. Mm-hmm. But also, do I... Oh, God. I feel like we're gonna get, like, an Otaro... Uh, or, sorry, we're gonna get... We're gonna get the king and the Minotaur fight. Like, uh... Because, remember... Because he's, he's supposed... Like, basically, like, uh... Freya summoned him now, basically, in a sense, where to... Basically, to go see, like, what's going on. Like, I wouldn't be surprised... Like, I, I just feel like Otaro's gonna run into the, Min- the Minotaur... And then, um, even though I would really like the Minotaur to survive, I feel like this this, this guy's gone. 
I don't, I don't think there's really any chance that he's going to be. Uh, uh, I don't think he's going to get be able to get through. I think he's going to be kind of like the sacrifice, like the sacrifice, so everybody else can get in. No, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, I think the Minotaur is too strong. I don't think they're going to keep. Uh, I don't think they're going to keep him. Keep him in the show. No, I, I think he'll manage sometimes. You think so? I don't know. I I, I think everybody else will make. I think everybody else will make it, but I think someone was going to have to to uh, to fall, and I I just feel like it's going to be the Minotaur. Even though I, I I hope they all actually make it. I would really like right. to, because it's like, I want to know more about the Minotaur story, because it, Otaro knows him, and I, I also want to know more about Otaro, oh. because Otaro's a beast. <laughs> right. So, but, I don't know, like, I I, I I guess I can kind of see where they would set him up to be as a sacrifice, but um, I, I don't believe that they would. So do you and, think Otaro's going to fight anybody? I think Otaro would probably spot the Minotaur, but he wouldn't kill him. He'll probably just, like, spar with him and test them out yeah because yeah because to be fair like i think because freya i think freya's uh familia is like the wild card because we don't really know like what she's trying to do because all we know is freya's like you know in a way assisting bell we we like as like we don't know why um right. like to the full extent we just know that you know he's like the grandson of zeus but we don't know as um, like why freya is like really interested in him the uh, reason i believe it's because uh, she wants to kind of write out the story of this hero from start to finish. And I, uh, yeah, <clears throat> and, I, and I think if you, if you remember from season one, like she's constantly watching over Bell, and she wants to see how his story unfolds. That how strong he gets, basically. Right, like how is this hero going to unfold? So that's basically it. Yeah. So I think that she would probably help out Bell in this situation, just I because yeah. that's a key point in his in his story, in a sense, to grow as a as a person or a hero. So. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I can see. It. So I, I, I think, and I hope, Otaro will help out. But at the same time, they don't, they don't, they're like, they don't know what's going on with the monsters, though. Right. Because, uh, so that, that's like kind of like the wild card. That's why I think yeah, I, I just feel like Otaro is going to run into the Minotaur, and then I don't really know what will happen in that situation. But I just feel like, because, because they, they've already mentioned before, like Otaro like remembers this Minotaur from before, but we yep. don't like know like why or where or when. Right. So, so I hope we get those answers. I hope they. I, I just hope that you know, like Otaro just doesn't just cut him down, and we just never hear about like what became of him. And then we have to go to Reddit to to figure out like well what happened. Oh fuck that! I'll just I'll just let it be a mystery at that point. You think so? I'll, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm good. But I, I kind of want to know. This is the first time like in Damachi in a long time. I actually want to know what's up, or like, or like what I'm missing. But it it's it's whatever. It's uh, a. Yeah. Uh, also, dude, it was kind of like a random, like basically who Vina ra- like Vina ran into. I was not expecting her to run into her. Um, I don't, I don't the uh, Tio- uh, Tiona. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I was not expecting her to be the one to show up. So we'll see. Um, I feel like so I definitely I, I think you know Belle's gonna show up and you know kind of save her, but then I just feel like it's at some point Eyes is just gonna show up again. Uh, but the thing is, though, but Haruhime is, I think, I think, uh, but Haruhime is running into the, running into the situation as well. Yeah, so I think Haruhime will probably catch up first, and then Bell will follow up closely behind her. Haruhime, the ultimate support. Right. So I think they'll be fine. Uh, if anything, I really just want to know what's going to happen with the Minotaur, which they actually gave him a name too. I don't, I forgot what his name. I forgot was. it too. I just keep calling him the Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> I, it feels bad because it's like I like this guy, and so it's like, oh, but his name is what again? Start of A. That's all I remember. Oh, a it. something. I, I yeah, I, I got nothing. I, I wouldn't even be able to guess it at this point. Um, also, we got to see uh, Gareth. It's kind of just bust in there. Mm-hmm. The guy's uh, the guy basically just drops down and just knocks everybody to the ground. But it's uh, but those magic swords, bit those magic swords are pretty beast. Dude, they're they're pretty they're pretty <laughs> damn good. Yeah. But uh, it's so I thought that like that whole kind of like uh, scene was uh, was was pretty good, but uh, we have two episodes left, and mm-hmm. we we have basically like the the Zenos have to make it back into the in like basically into the dungeon. Hopefully they all make it. We have Ryu and Eyes currently fighting. We have Otaro mm-hmm. coming in. I would just, I think we both just assume he's gonna he's gonna meet the Minotaur though. I think that's probably what's gonna yeah. be. Probably. So we have that to kind of wrap up. So there's. Quite a few things kind of going on that we have two episodes left, but I, but I think they'll actually. I think it's enough. But it's not going to be one of those epi- like one of those things that I think they where they're going to have time to be able to set up for next season. I think they're going to need both episodes to kind of finish off uh, this this arc. Hmm. Do you think they're going to make another season though? 
it's popular enough. Um, I, I mean, I would hope. I mean, if they somehow made a third season after like what we got for a second season, I I hope so. Because like now this is like renewed like my faith in the show, and it's like I I want to I want it to keep going. So I really hope so. <laughs> hope but it seems like though. Wait, when did we get the second second season? Was last year, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. okay. Yeah, so I don't know. I, we'll we'll see. I, hopefully, it's one of those shows where they they announce it at the end of the season and they say like you know was season four in the works or coming soon or something like that, which would be awesome. But this is actually one of the shows that if it doesn't, I actually at this point wouldn't mind just reading the light novel. This kind of like, again, got me, it got me into the show. But this is one of those, like I would definitely like to, to like to, to continue and just kind of like know what's going on because, uh, just from this arc has just built up so much more and I just want to know what happens. But, yeah, true. It, it kind of makes me want to play the bubble game again, just because I know I'll probably get more story out of it. Oh man, yeah, that's true. Like, it's like we're gonna get like like more of the story through the mobile game, but we're so far behind. We're 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 no longer at the level, yeah, so it's over. It's not be good. But, I'm good. Yeah, no, that's it for me as well. All right, that is the end of, of Damachi for this week, and we will continue on with Standing on a Million Lives. Kufa, Ooh. dude, this yeah. one is this is the first one. I'm just like. Uh, can I hop in here quick, actually? Sure. Oh, sure. Uh, Sasha's on if you guys want to do Fire Force. Oh, yeah, he could just jump in whenever. Okay. Oh. Come on in, um, Sasha. Yeah. Well, we'll have just, like, a little mini piece of just, like, in the podcast. I'm just going to leave this in, so I apologize, guys. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know, dude. There's a, parts, a few part, things in Standing in a Million Lives is the first one. I'm like, eh. But, mm. anyway, we have Sasha. Welcome, sir. Hello. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, wait, what are you welcoming, man? I'm supposed to welcome you. Bro, I welcome all <laughs> those. Just roll, just roll with it. Roll with it, guys. All Let's right. go. Let's this. go. Good people to my world. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but okay. But we'll start off with, uh, since uh, Sasha joined, we will just then jump right into, um, right into Fire Force. Fire Force. Sasha, go for it. Fire Force. Uh, this is honestly an episode that's more like what Fire Force used to be like. Where it was really good animation, really cool fight scenes, with zero purpose whatsoever behind <laughs> them. Um, I gotta say, like the episode, it if this episode came earlier, it would have been a lot more enjoyable. But the fact of the matter is, it's come so randomly. <laughs> like you're supposed to be building towards the end of the season, which is you know when you expect some heavy hitting plot points or action sequences that have consequences behind them. Yet, this is just character development for, is it Tamaki? Is that her name? Yeah. Taki, yeah. No, Taki. Okay, thank you. Um, So, while I liked the eye candy in terms of the sequence on the rooftop, the chase sequence with the two, whatever they are, foxes, (laughs) it, the episode, you know, ends on that hammy note with the, uh, with the fan service, and then it's just like, in the big picture, where, why is this at the very end, why is this the episode before you end the season? Like, why is this happening then? Because mm-hmm. you were just in the nether. Now it's back to Benny Maru and training. It's just a whole mess of a story. Like, uh, so unfortunately, the episode was enjoyable, but it just Poor it's place. too little, too late. Yeah, yeah. I actually thought like the like the two twins. I thought their transformation was actually pretty sick. Like that was like my uh, uh, that was like, I think like my favorite part. Even though I think like it was starting to lead towards the comedy with uh, Benny Morrow and basically like those other two for training, like I just like I like how they just hog tie them and he just puts them over a fire. Uh, which oh is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, anything with like Benny Morrow introduced like or any like if he's part of the episode like and with Arthur it can't be that bad. <laughs> uh, but the the but the sad thing sure. uh, the, the the thing that was disappointing is that the, it was like all focused on Tamaki. Which was, uh, I mean, I get it though. Like, it's it's nice to finally, I guess, like, see her like attempt to like to want to get better or to train because like she's had like multiple like uh, like episodes where like it, it's somewhat focused on her and she just got destroyed. And it, so it's like it's nice that she's like, um, I guess, working towards it. But I, I hated that it was basically how where Benny Mara was like, yeah, you just haven't been trying. Oh, type it, or you haven't been taking things serious. I'm thinking like, really, that's that's gonna be the lesson. Like, that's all it's gonna be. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was getting the... this vibe of when uh, in Dragon Ball Super, and they were trying to teach uh, when Cabal was trying to teach Cliff how to turn into a Super Saiyan. 
it, and he just uh, explained to it as it's that tingly tingle in your back. back. <laughs> yeah, like I was getting this what the fuck moment. Like what? <laughs> this isn't how you get stronger, guys. This isn't how you're supposed to like develop your powers and go to the next level. Basically, you just had to be serious. And then, you know, to be fair, if you're about to die two or three times, wouldn't that force you to kind of take things seriously, right? To to obtain your true power. So to me, that's what bugged me the most about this episode. Yeah, true. It's it's just more convenience and it shows the shallowness of the writing that comes with the show, which is just unfortunate because you have so much potential. Like I think Fire Force, oh man, it could be a very memorable shonen, but as it stands, it's just sloppy. It, it mm. it's it's. I think it focuses on way too many um, directions in the show and it doesn't just narrow it down to like these are our key characters this is the th- key theme we got going on let's let's just do it up uh but i completely agree with that like i'm not gonna turn around anymore i'm gonna run straight at them ha ha yes good job oh man dude okay the best part was i sent threaten this um but <laughs> i was on my anime list and i looked at the episode review and one person commented like 48 out of 48 straight 10 out of 10 episodes for the show i don't know why nobody likes it or why it's so derated i'm just thinking yeah that's probably the problem with the show <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was uh, like i was like man this is like uh, some uh, delirious individual yeah but it, it's uh, I, I don't know it's well, I think well, we have one episode left, so I don't even I, I don't even think it's going to be like a setup for anything. I think it's just going to be big, kind of like just like a I think just like some episode throw the rest of the budget at just like a like a very like very nice looking episode, but but very like very little point almost. No, this makes you feel like for sure there's going to be another season. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, how are you going to end a season with like Shinra and Arthur powering up? Well, like for what reasons? But so this is the creator of Soul Eater, and they never finished the animated for Soul Eater. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. No, yeah, it only went. I think like it was like fifty something episodes, and then it just stopped. So I, wow. I really don't know who decide like who actually decides that, or if it's like an animated uh, animation studio that picks it up, or if it's like a Shonen manga? Jump. Is manga done? Uh, is no, manga manga's done? still going, but it's in like the. F- I think it's 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 in the final arc, I believe. Wait, wait, Soul Eater or Fire Force? Oh, Fire Force. I think Soul Eater finished okay. uh, a long time ago. Long, long. Okay. I think so, yeah. Man, yeah I think it finished. Yeah. Like anime is then. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have no idea. That's pretty terrible. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm dropping this either way after this last episode, <laughs> so <laughs> I really don't care. But I yeah. will say one thing that did disappoint me majorly, Benny Maru comes back, and you show us zero resolution to what happened between joker him and burns for the rest of this season oh, like even yeah. if we get two minutes of it it's just like holy moly come on guys that was the the high point of the season you have yet to even reference what's happened there and for me it's oh it, it's just dumbfounding how they have completely gone away from that because I, for me at least that was the most interesting part of the show oh, and by, to by not far. even reference it right not even reference it or allude to what happened there or, you know, give some type of hint like Benny Maru shows up. He's got a scar or something like, I don't want to talk about that. You're like, oh, OK, some <laughs> shit went down. Right. Zero. Nothing. Everything's cool. He's just chilling back, making like fire wheels behind his back while he's meditating. OK. <laughs> All right, bro. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be one of those where they're going to it's going to be like a flashback type of deal later on. But we're not going to be able to see it, though, until if they actually decide another season, which sucks. Yeah, uh, you, you can write it out to me, bro. You can, you can text me one day and just say, like, hey. <laughs> yeah, I'll text you, like, five years from now. It's like, oh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> they went over it. That's exactly what happened with my boy about uh, My Hero Academia <laughs> last night. I was like, dude, just spoil it for me. Just tell me what's going on. And I was like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't invest time into that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it'll be like five years from now. I'll be like, oh yeah, like they finally went over this, and you'll be like, who the fuck is better tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, but it'll be a long uh, gone situation. But yeah, dude, we got one more episode, and then we'll be, uh, we'll at least be done. Well, spoiler now. alert: I give this season a five out of ten, regardless of the last episode. <laughs> wow, a five huh? with the potential of dropping more, or a, or a part, um, possibly a point going up. Nah, I think I think it's one episode is not going to swing twenty three other episodes. <laughs> <laughs> like it just it would be impossible unless it's just 
the most amazing episode of all time. So for me, it was like there were some episodes I enjoyed, uh, but overall, the quality of the show just uh, it went down. Like the first half, as weird as it was, was a lot stronger than the second half, which I wouldn't yeah. expect after that stupid arc with the the weasel, mole. <laughs> yep, or the mole. Yeah, so so basically, what you're saying is the last episode would have to be where uh, Giovanni would have to lose his bug parts and go back to something else. Uh, Benny Maro and Joker would have to basically drop some uh, some lore of like what we missed. Uh, what, what else am I missing that basically oh, ruined the show? <laughs> I got you. So the best possible ending would be, you know, probably uh, divide the episode into this: ten percent Giovanni gets his body back and he's kidnapped from random person right sure. awesome uh 10 percent the fourth captain just making a weird sexual noises <laughs> as he gets flames <laughs> thrown at his body and then 80 percent joker burns benny maru's storyline boom i really don't care about the rest of the crew or what's going on i i, I can't stand to see another scene where shinra it's so stupid. He has no idea what to do. So he just comes back and reports word for word what happened to the captain. And the captain's <laughs> like, hmm, I think it's a bad idea to do anything about that. How about you just go talk to random people in another village? <laughs> okay. Fetch <laughs> quest. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's, it, it feels like that's what the show's gone to. Yeah. It, uh, I guess really the only thing we know, or I guess, it, it, is it basically like the scars? Like if they're, it, it basically just sounds like if they're hit by somebody that's like part of, was it the, part of the, uh, uh, as part of like those flames that they're somehow connected to it like because they all have like Dude. those scars that they're hit by it I mean besides that I don't think we have anything else the one moment that looked really cool though was that previous captain that basically has like all those um uh, all those ba- like bandages wrapped around him mm-hmm. like his moment I thought was kind of cool oh yep well I, like I said the show is really well animated and they've got the budget to make really impressive yeah. fights uh, but uh, you know when, yeah. when when that's not going for it. Well, I like uh, I like the lore though with the Benny Maro and actually that captain as well. Like I thought that was actually I thought that story was solid too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you're constantly like diverting into something else. Yeah, right? that's true. That's true. Yep. yep. Such as you know, girls chasing another girl on top of a roof. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but <laughs> it's just like okay, we it, within the context of the story. I'm kind of biased there, sir. I, I apologize. I, I'll take. I will. I will retract those statements. I apologize to all the girls on rooftops. Okay, <laughs> chasing other girls. <laughs> but it's just like you tag. get what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it. Those two girls were never mentioned. Really, I don't remember them priorly. Maybe they were mentioned briefly, but I, I really don't remember them to be of any significance. They were and around, then, but that was it. No. They were there, okay, yeah, they have no points. And then Tamaki, right? Like her and her character. It's just like, oh, dude, you had. Is this 47 episodes? And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Ah, Fire Force, man. <laughs> Telling you. It's all about Golden Kabooey, baby. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll mention it at the end of the, at the, end of the podcast. Of, uh, right, of, my, right. of mine and Taylor's thoughts. But we have a few shows left to go over. Do but... your things, guys. Do your things. I'll, uh, just let me know when you're back to Golden Kabooey. Because I want to share my spoiler-free thoughts of the latest episode. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll probably like if, right. if you're gonna mute yourself, I'll have someone else message you because I can't zoom out during because uh, I'm yes. I'm hosting. So that sounds good to me. All right, man. Thanks for uh, joining us for Fire Force and giving your thoughts, and we'll talk to you in a bit. No problem. Thank you, audience. Welcome. Yes, yes. Welcome. <laughs> okay, that is the end of Fire Force for this week. We have one episode left, and then we are GG. Uh, but we will continue on where we were just about to go to before Fire Force and. Cool. We can start with standing on a million lives. Okay. So yeah. So with this episode, it it was kind of more intense moments that was occurring, right? Uh, it looks like each character was kind of facing their like um, like their personal fears, I guess, or the things that they've had to overcome to get to where they are. Mm-hmm. And uh, with the cliffhanger that we got, I guess puns puns intended uh yeah we don't know what's going to happen like if they're all dead or what because i mean obviously they're not dead right because they're the main characters but yeah basically from the looks of it they're they're all like dead uh at the end of this episode so i'm not sure what's going to occur now at this point but uh yeah those some pretty intense moments though yeah like the only, the one thing I, when when was there snow when were they when did they travel in an area that was cold i thought they were like in desert weren't they 
Yeah, no, that's the thing. It was <laughs> a a thing that just happened. So I don't know if it's an event or what. But so it's a th- the villagers knew that it was going to snow, apparently. So it was a thing that just happened. Yet there's somehow yeah. yetis living in the area in in the desert mm-hmm. that just happens to have a snowstorm. That's the one Bro. thing I'm like, okay, all right, this is l- uh. reaching a little bit. Uh, that that was the only kind of like I guess thing I had against it. Uh, but the but the was it the you know the darkness 2.0. Does uh, actually like the MC, which right. it, which I, I, I forget like when they complete the quest, like they're still in the in the world though, aren't they? Like th- yeah, so he's he'll come back. Forward. Yeah, okay. You know, the, time, the time fast forward at extreme rate apparently. Oh God, is it really? Yeah. So oh, she, so oh my God. She's gonna she's gonna either pass away or die. <laughs> or she's gonna be somebody fairly older. Man, that's depressing yeah. actually. Why'd you yeah. tell me this cool? <laughs> I mean, man, if you pay attention to the story, <laughs> why is it that I'm the only guy that pays attention okay. to these details? Okay, to be fair, okay, I don't know. at the beginning of this show, when we were watching it, I didn't think it was going to be that good. And I'm actually, like, fairly invested in this show now. Or I'm actually, like, interested in it. Yeah. No, I get it. I, but it's, uh... Oh, God. I, I don't know. Like, what, what that... Um... But, like, well, that was, like, really the only thing I had kind of against it. Uh, everything yeah. else, I thought, like, it was kind of like... Like, I'm... You know, I, I mean, I, I'm with you. Definitely, they're not all dead. Or if they are, I wonder if they get like a one-time revive thing, or they get like a one-time chance to like come back alive or something. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of maybe thinking of that, but I, I'm a, I'm thinking that maybe uh, Darkness 2.0 might somehow show up in some way. Mm. Uh, but or because besides that, I don't know what else could really happen in this situation unless whatever he fell into, like has something there. I mean, the only thing I can think of is that maybe the one that comes in the clutch this time around would be the the fire mage, just because she's a fucking fire mage. You have the ability to like heat up yourself, so I don't know why this is an issue for you. This is like going to an ice gym and Pokemon, and then bring fire Pokemon. And like, oh man, fuck, they're ice types. I don't know what to do. If only I had the weakness to ice Pokemon. Like, like it's it's mind boggling that this girl is so useless. When this is her time to shine, she ain't doing shit to help. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think, like, I want to say that maybe they're just showcasing that in this episode. And next episode, it'll show her, like, kind of having this epiphany, right? That she's a fire wizard. So she'll she'll manage to survive somehow. And um, the other thing that bothered me this episode was that uh, the MC, who was able to kill the Yeti, right? I, I really thought that that was going to be the saving grace. He was going to kill the Yeti, skin it, and then either, like wear its skin or whatever or create like an armor set or something from it but no he just left it there and he just kept walking <laughs> which is like to me it was just mind-boggling well the one thing that sucks though is like they are, they do have limited time and it sounds like it like it's like they may not make it like uh because what was it they still have to do like what was it 10 kilometers in like six hours or something uh i think it was like six kilometers in six hours oh it was six kilometers at this point okay yeah yeah because uh, i mean it, it, it's doable though I wonder, like, what if, like, when he fell down the hole, like, what if that actually, like, um, uh, kind of uh, clears some more travel time, uh, like, you know, like, what is it, travel distance? Uh, well, based on the map that you're getting, it's basically 2D, not 3D, so they would have to transverse the map, uh, like, vertically and horizontally, Yeah. in a sense. Right. So I don't think that's going to help. I, I, I mean, I didn't think so either, but I thought maybe, because yeah. I was first thinking, like, when he was going up the hill, I thought, like, okay, he's going to just... You know, slide down this thing some, and basically just, you know, clear distance quick. Right, and then he right. fell out a hole. I'm thinking, well, that's God. <laughs> I thought they, I thought by far that was going to be what was going to happen. And that didn't happen. But this, this is one of the cliffhanger episodes where I thought, oh, damn, I wonder exactly what's going to happen. I mean, right. obviously, like, you know, they're not all going to, you know, just die and that, that whole deal is going to, like, that, that whole deal is going to happen. But I, I have no idea. I don't know where they're going to go for this. Yeah, but you did mention that maybe they get like a reviver or something. I right. mean, this is a video everybody gets game, one, so, right? So it wouldn't surprise me if they all just had a continue save up, and then they'll just continue from the last save point that they. Or had. or or somehow they basically like uh, take like a like a brutal like exp loss or something, or right. or like they lose like a bunch of levels to revive or something. I don't know because it seems like 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 those those things aren't completely like out of the question, right? And then if you think about it, it is towards the end of the season, so maybe there's a, like a major uh, plot or or de- like uh, game game mechanic that they're not aware of that's going to greatly help them in the next season or so. But, yeah, 
Yeah, I think um, next episode is definitely it's going to be the the res, it's going to be like the the resolution for like this this arc, and then I think right. the final episode is going to be setting everything up for the next. Mm-hmm. So so we'll get the answers next week. I'm I I feel fairly confident that that's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But man, dude, I hope this fire mage becomes useful because that's the only. I, I feel like that's going to be the number one thing that saves them. Yeah, I, I wish that darkness two point was actually a, a part of their crew. Like uh, you know, for like the, the like the whole time being, or somehow she like, because she's I, I think she's definitely like a great supporting character that they introduced. Yeah, but it's yeah, no. yeah. yeah. S happens, yo. <laughs> I got nothing else. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Oh man, I, like I yeah, I can't wait. I wait. I can't wait till next week. I want to see what happens because uh, it like I said, it is very uh, interesting as to what's happening now. Yeah, to, like the beginning of the season. So. Oh yeah, definitely. All right, then. That will be the end of Standing on a Million Lives. And then we will go to Ikebukuro next. Yeah. Go for it. Bro, so with Ikebukuro, uh, I guess I'll wait for Kayla to get back as well. But uh, I'm here. Oh, there she is. <laughs> yeah, so they're finally, I don't know why they waited <laughs> so long, but they went back to the like the main storyline from episode one, all right? <laughs> They brought back the Chinese people. Apparently, yeah, they brought back the Chinese sister. <laughs> the, the people from from Kansai or whatever, like apparently they were behind all this. So I don't like. What is this pacing? What is this story? I don't know. <laughs> you know how this do, stuff is so weird. It's so dumb. Oh my god. I mean, it's still a good. It's still a good show, I guess. So I can't say too much. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. You uh, you can explain what happened, but. I, I, I didn't I honestly got kind of confused. Like they they throw out so many um they throw out so many names in different corporations and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I, I I sometimes well not not normally so bad but like with this episode sometimes I don't quite get a feel for exactly what's happening until like the very end when mm-hmm. Matava like just like lays it all out Makoto, sorry. Makoto like just lays it all out for me and I'm like, "Oh, okay." Because, because especially if it's like like seems a little bit slower paced or something, or if I don't think I'm finding it interesting, I'll kind of zone out a little bit. Uh, none of well, them actually turned out to be not interesting to me. I've liked all the episodes except for the hmm. gang wars, but um, <laughs> <Gang> <laughs> but I was really excited to see the sister back again. She didn't just disappear off the face of the planet. And I thought it was really interesting that this episode was talking <laughs> like that. This anime brought up the concept of like Japanese um. What's the word? What, uh, like feelings towards foreigners, xenophobia. Guess, oh, is that what it was called? Xenophobia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that that was brought up. Um, one thing that I continue to like about the show is that it it feels like it's very in touch with the times. Like mm-hmm. it talks about things that are like issues now that are very relatable, and um, that the, and I thought this episode continued that in terms of like co- like in terms of pacing or like. Is it fleshing out like a full like story? I mean, I'm I'm honestly not even holding my breath for something like that. I'm just rolling with the punches and enjoying these little side stories as they come. It makes you wonder, like, <laughs> is this how it like how the story played out in a novel? Because as David mentioned, this was like based off a novel, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wonder if this is the pacing that they went through in a novel as well. And if so, how the hell is it like? Like making sales, like why are people enjoying this novel? I I don't get it. I don't know that the pacing is exactly the same, but from what I've read from people's reviews of the light novels, yeah, I mean th- these were the same types of comments. Um, okay. everything that we've said, they've said too. Maybe not about pacing, like the pacing might have been better, but like just the what are we focusing on and like kind of jumping from one thing to another. Mm-hmm. Um, those were all things that I heard people talk about. So. Yeah, I felt like the first episode was the main story, and then they went on a filler <laughs> arc run for like ten episodes, and now we're going back to the main story <laughs> at the end of the season. So it's it's really confusing as to what they're trying to like, like what point they're trying to like, run, yeah run across you. So, so do we have one episode left? I think so. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Like I'm gonna be sad to say goodbye to the show. Actually, like I mean, like I like the characters. Like I want, I want to, I want to see this fully fleshed out do you know what i mean like i yeah, can no, definitely I, I totally have feel more <laughs> i feel like this is what the synopsis was talking about right because yeah. as of right 
as of right now, there's extreme prejudice against the Chinese. And then mm -hmm. uh, obviously this group from Kansai means business. They're the one that's trying to like, like draw people out. Uh, and if you think about it, there's so many things that could be considered precious to Makoto. So I'm assuming someone dies, right? Someone precious to him dies. And that's what causes this drastic uh, chain events to occur that will actually invoke this gang war or whatever, like big, um, like big problem that they're going to have. So I don't really know if, if they did, like if they had episode one become last week's episode and then all these random filler episodes, <laughs> Like from episode one to eight or whatever, I think I would have been totally okay with that because a lot of the characters and the on on the random cases that Makoto was having, they actually came back into play this episode. So mm -hmm. I feel like they were actually setting them up to actually be of importance to the main story as well. Question yeah. for you guys, quick: what, what episode are you guys on? I think it's ten or eleven, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oof! I've been uh, numbering them incorrectly on the podcast. Then there's twelve episodes for the season. And I think I, I I numbered last week's episode eight. <laughs> so, Ooh, oh, yeah, that's you? definitely wrong. I'll have to change some stuff then. I uh, um, I'm sorry. I can always double check, but I stopped I stopped tracking after a while. Like what episodes I'm on, of thing I'm really bad at that. But mm -hmm. um, I am too when I don't I like, watch the show. One thing that I like about this one too is actually something that David brought up like way back in the beginning, uh, when I had made a comment about um. Like, these are supposed to be gangs, but, like, we've got, like, ballet dancers, and they're, like, doing, like, good stuff for the community, and, like, all this other stuff. I mean, like, again, coming from America, like, that is not how gangs operate. <laughs> so, like, I was kind of, like, watching this whole show, like, tongue-in-cheek, like, okay. Uh, they just, they just then, want like, to dance, okay? They just want to dance. <laughs> but then, oh, and, like, and, and this was episode nine, apparently. So, we got nine. three more oh. We got three more. Oh, yeah. awesome. Okay. Uh, but yeah. And so, so I was right. I right, watched the show, man. <laughs> okay, my bad. Relax. <laughs> you were right, sir. <laughs> it's okay. I, I just feel better. I had, I didn't get anything wrong. I'm sorry. Continue. Okay. <laughs> Do you have anything else, Threaten? All right. Um, <laughs> uh, so I was going to say I um, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Oh no, it's it's okay. Uh, oh oh so, yeah. no, I got I got I got it back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what what? And then this episode, in this episode, uh, that conversation between Makoto and whatever the guy's name I can't even remember. King Sk Skishima is what I think of him as. It's the same voice actor. Um, okay. But he was talking about like how Ikebukuro has changed over the years, and he mm -hmm. doesn't want to like you know lose the things that he loves about the neighborhood or the town, um, and and Makoto, one of them had mentioned, like, oh, yeah, you know, this, this used to be, like, really rough, but actually now this is considered, like, a really high-quality place to live in. Like, people really do mm -hmm. want to, like, are actively seeking to, to move here. And it made me, my whole point being, it brought me back to what David said about how, um, like, you know, Ikebukuro isn't even, like, a bad neighborhood or anything. And it may, that's what kind of, like, another thing that, uh, of, like, why I feel like this is kind of in touch with the times. And, like, mm -hmm. really, at the end of the day, I kind of feel, like, I'm kind of okay with there not really being a whole lot of structure, because I feel like the main character of this is actually, like, the town. And so mm -hmm. it's all about, like, the atmosphere and just seeing, like, what's going on there. And it's kind of like a love letter to that area, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of okay with wherever they go with it, to be honest. Mm, For the fun. next three episodes. I don't know. Yeah, no, it kind of makes sense because uh, I remember there's a lot of animes that kind of that tries to bring that point across too, or highlight a certain city or, or prefecture or whatever. And they do it in a way where it's not really, um, where it's kind of like cringe or like kind of corny in a sense. So mm -hmm. if, if that's the case, I can kind of see it. And I think they bring Ikabukuro to like a, like a nice light. So mm -hmm. um, I kind of get that too. And I kind of, and I can kind of uh, see where, uh, I think it was Takashi. Takashi or King, I forget. Uh, but I can kind of get their point and how they want to protect this this town or this philosophy that this town has always had. Um, so it's it's pretty nice to see a character like that that can kind of just be in tune with the town and see like what his motives are, what makes him like so popular or so headstrong. So yeah, I wish we would have, and I'm sure that's probably what they're going to go into a little bit more for these next few episodes. Is him like what is he thinking? He's got the same basic look, damn look on his face, like the entire time. He, mm -hmm. Like, he's pretty flat as a character. So, I mean, I, I hope that they go into that a little bit more. I mean, they kind of hinted at it at the end of this one. 
Um, well, I mean, he's the leader, so maybe he has that reputation to uphold. So that's why he always has that poker face or that. Well, sure, face. but we as the viewers need to have a deeper glance into his psyche, you know? Uh, I guess. Somehow. If, if Makoto wasn't there, I would get it. But since Makoto's yeah. there, I, I guess I'm okay with that. I suppose so. I mean, Makoto's really the main character of the whole thing, so. Right. And uh, like with what David was mentioning, this is like in, in IRL, this place is just a place full of hipsters. <laughs> I wonder if this is like like the G-Boys, right? It's like the old school Ikebukuro that wants to keep it that way. Mm-hmm. And then the Red Angels is like the hipsters trying to come into town <laughs> to take over. Maybe that's the game where we're getting, right? <laughs> like, move over, old-fashioned way of living. This is like 2020, you know? <laughs> but they so well. Yeah, so if, like, if that's the case, well done show. But <laughs> why the hell are you making your, like, are you, like, flesh not your story this way? I, I don't get it. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, if I'm right, dude, I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> you know? But it, it would kind of make sense, right? Like to me, it would make sense. Yeah, that's kind of right because it's not a gang war physically; it's like a metaphorical gang war, right? Like yeah. the way of living in in uh, Ikebukuro. It, it's it's changing, and people want to defend it or preserve it, but that's just not how it is. So, man. Yeah, I could actually see that. That's really good, Koo. Yeah, that's so man, I should be a writer. God. <laughs> so good. <laughs> you should have been uh you should have been one of the editors on this. For real. Oh my god. Yeah, like 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 I said, like I don't get what they were thinking of making episodes two two to uh two through eight, like what it was. Mm-hmm. And then like try to tie up the story now to episode one and make it like a like a real like serious theme now. So that's to me that's really weird have faith yeah. that they'll be able to pull it off i think it's like a faithful anime adaption to be honest like i feel like they're mm-hmm. adapting it pretty faithfully so however it was written i feel like that's how they're doing it so hopefully there was a reason for why. I, I really hope not because that's really weird i i don't see <laughs> how you would think of stringing along these like uh these events this way and then have like the user have the attention span to keep up and remember everything that happened Right. This would be like chapter one, right? It would be episode one. And then the next eight chapters would be just some random shit. And then by the time you get to chapter nine and it continues the main story, like you completely forgot what happened in chapter one. So uh I, I that that pacing to me doesn't make sense. So I agree and I disagree. I mean, I feel like it's a it's a device that's used in stuff sometimes where you'll introduce a con like it's basically like foreshadowing, right? Where yeah. I mean this is a long stretch to go for foreshadowing, but I mean, people do it where they'll they'll introduce the con- the, the thing that you're that you're that, that that like you're focusing on is that like there there's this plot and then there's filler and you're absolutely right these do feel like filler it, it doesn't feel like oh let, let's foreshadow this and then kind of having have a running element of it as we like explore these other things that might tie into the original elements it, it's not like that which is how she'll normally do it but mm-hmm. I mean. I still remember everything that happened in the beginning. It's not really that much time, so I guess it doesn't feel quite as awkward for me. No, I mean, I remember it too, but from the average viewer, I think it would be kind of weird. Yeah. Or not weird, but hard for them to, for you to expect them to remember everything and just go along with it like it's normal. Yeah. Uh, Do you have any other thoughts on this episode specifically? Uh, no, We're again, kinda... I thought, yeah, uh, I, think, I think the topic was 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 a nice introduction of like the prejudice or of xenophobia whatever it's called um it's it's really weird how they bring up these like these topics into an anime and then like actually flesh out the the story Mm -hmm. in a way that kind of lets the viewer kind of understand what's happening or what's going on Mm -hmm. um but yeah other than that no i think it was done fairly well and it was enjoyable to watch so i thought the ending was kind of corny with shadow (laughs) Do you remember? Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I kind of just brushed it. Up. Like, I can't think of Shadow <laughs> as like a serious character now, so I don't really know. What <laughs> uh, but it was kind of cute. His little interaction with Makoto. I was like, okay, fine, you can stay. <laughs> I'll accept this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I suppose. But oh. I think that's that's more what I was referring to when I said I got kind of confused by some stuff. Is they just introduced like a whole bunch of people for this episode, and and I don't think it was really necessary to go through all that to to get into the theme of what was happening but it's fine this is a small trifle 
Uh, it would only make sense if they do match tie all the past characters into the main story mm-hmm. from this point on. Yeah. And and it looks like they're doing that, so it's yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's all I've got. Mm-hmm. Yep, same here. All right, so we have, I think, that'll be the end for Ikebukuro Westgate. Um, the final show we'll be talking about this week is Moriarty. And yep, Taylor, so go I for started- it. I started watching this episode just a couple minutes last week and finished it up this week. And this one um, introduces us to Sherlock. So this one is entirely from his perspective. And I, like absolutely no questions asked. Like hands down, this is my favorite Sherlock I've seen depicted in anything, which I'm sure would just be like a travesty to Sherlock fans of any Sherlock across the world. It is. Forever um, Robert Downey. But uh, I really love him. He's absolutely fantastic. I think he's so funny. Um, and also, like, Watson, who, whenever when I have had to watch Sherlock stuff before, Watson is normally, like, the character that I like the most. And so far, that's also, I don't necessarily like him the most. He showed up, like, halfway through the episode, so he's had maybe, like, 10, 15 minutes on screen. But I really like him as well. Um it basic and this episode basically covered um, like introducing just the you know Sherlock and the characters that surround him and his daily life, and then there's a murder that happens, um, a new murder, and next to the dead body, there uh, Sherlock's name is written in blood, and so the the London detectives come after him to arrest him, which is basically a joke. They know he didn't really do it, but they have to bring him in anyway since his name is written in blood. And it's basically them solving the murder. And it leads to them realizing at the end that this was all a setup from Moriarty to test them to see if they'd figure out what's going on. And that was pretty much the episode. And it was really great. I liked it a lot. Um, I really had, yeah, it's just a good show. You guys should watch it. That's all, that's, that's all I have for it. It's fun. Yeah. Although, um, I will say that... I'm kind of hoping that they'll still have some of the one-off episodes that they had before they introduced Sherlock, where you get to know, like, just, like, random characters through London that Moriarty deals with. Because I really liked some of those episodes a lot. Like, a lot of them were pretty emotional or, like, touching. And I don't know if this is going to mostly just be, like, a Death Note-esque Sherlock and Moriarty showdown now or what. So, we'll see. Man, okay. <laughs> Doesn't sound too bad. How many episodes are left this season? Do you know? Or what episode are they on? I don't know. Okay. I can look it up. Okay. We'll figure it out. Just checking. But okay, it sounds like that'll be that'll be the wrap-up for Marietti. And uh, we're just going to do a few just kind of quick thoughts on... Uh, Sasha is currently watching the third season of Golden Kamui. Uh, I know me and Taylor are... We began it. We're going to... Uh, try to catch up and hopefully finish, you know, catch up to everything and um, so we can actually kind of give our thoughts at the end of the third season as well. But uh, I guess I guess we can start first. Uh, Sasha, I don't know if you want to give your kind of like review on basically the episode you watched this third season or if we should kind of, or we should get our thoughts first. Whatever you guys prefer, honestly. Okay. All right. I mean, yeah, we'll give our thoughts for it. We've only gotten through the first three episodes uh, of the yes. first season of Golden Kamui. But Taylor, I will let you kind of give your uh, you know thoughts uh, so far. So my very first thought, the first screen of uh, of the show was in uh, Laodong Province in or Peninsula in China, and I was like, wait, I thought this took place in Japan. So that threw me off, and I had to research all that. But beyond that, it was really really good. I mean, like I, I really like the characters; they've got a lot of depth. One thing that I was concerned about that some people I'd heard reviewing the show didn't like. Like, they'd said it was boring, that it goes too much into these different cultures, like, the really, like, um, basic details of how they live, how they hunt, how they cook, how they survive. I, I actually weather. find that really interesting. Yeah, yeah, I do, too, and I was worried I'd find it boring as well, but it's not. It's super interesting. If anything, I actually think that they could go more into it and spend more time <laughs> on it, because I found myself rewinding a couple times to be like, wait, did I catch all that? And then, um, if, if it's not... It, it's either interesting and it's funny a lot of the times too. Um, we're kind of at the point, there's like a lot of characters that get introduced in the first three episodes, basically a bunch of people that are all trying to search for gold and they've all got different priorities and are different levels in the know um, in this, in this hunt. So I'm kind of still just figuring out who they all are and who their allegiances are too. So I don't really know everybody's names yet quite super well, but like where the show's going, I mean, it's, it's just, it's super interesting. I like it a lot. 
Yeah, there's a uh, Ku and Brian. I actually get there's parts of it like I get like kind of like Doctor Stone vibes, uh, where they're 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 going in the culture where they have like their own ways of kind of doing things, where it's uh, not normal uh, or not I guess like not the normal like ways because you basically have you know somebody that's from Japan, or like I guess like the cities or the towns something like that, and then you're basically with like I'm assuming some like mountain. Uh, like a mountain tribe that could live completely different, like where they've never heard of, like, like uh, like the same things. Miso. Yeah, like miso apparently looks like <laughs> looks like shit to them, to uh, <laughs> to to other people. But, yeah, it was really weird. I've actually like never. Shit. Yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> interesting. yes. Interesting. Uh, but it, the whole thing is like at the at the like because I actually have not found. I don't know if it's just because I'm getting, I'm just getting old. But like the parts where they're actually going in depth, basically like how they like how they actually do things, where I don't find that boring at all. I actually find it like really interesting, especially when I find out it's actually historically accurate in a sense, or it's like the way that they actually did things. So I was like, oh damn! I, and I, I, then there's also multiple times where I was like, I don't know how the hell they do this. Um, I also like I also like kind of like where the story is going, where they basically just immediately jump into it, where it, not even like a like a side story, but it's just like kind of like the main, or at least. Like how I see it, like kind of like the main story, where it's basically, they t- like the, this old like older kind of drunk dude tells of a tale, of like where like how to find gold about how all these people like all these people that were death row inmates were were tattooed that basically like you put them all together or if you collect them all they show you the, like the map of the location which I thought damn that's kind of that's pretty dark. Then like my first thought Sasha when I watched this first episode I just remember like hearing you say oh man like like the it's like the show is hilarious it's so funny. And then it's like, oh, there's a terrible CGI bear, and blah blah blah. blah. Oh, I thought, yeah? but the first, ep- but the first episode, I was like, damn, I was like, this isn't funny at all. I was like, what kind of shit is this? <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I mean, honestly, like, everything about like the first step, besides you know, like the CGI bear, which uh, like the whole, the whole like how like how it was done, just like the characters. I mean, but I think the MC is the like the MC, like the girl, both solid characters, like the like the wolf. But every time I see an animal, I'm thinking, oh my god, this thing's but like he's probably gonna die. But uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Sasha and I already have that covered. Yeah, like it, it's 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 because immediately I think of, like an animal. I was like, well, shit. <laughs> I was like, it's not gonna be yeah. something's gonna happen. But then um, uh, also like the side characters, like uh, the uh, the escape artist, like that whole situation was fucking ridiculous. Where they're de- uh, like in the second episode where they're talking about like hypothermia. And they're kind of they're like going through like the, the parts of like you know, like when you're sitting in a hypothermia and just like I, I love that inner like almost like that inner monologue guy that speaks where they kind of give you like a like historical kind of like 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 in certain situations like what actually happens I feel like his like the voice is actually like like the historical like like, like being historically accurate like, like a voice guy kind of like the Morgan Freeman of the show where like you hear this mo- you, know, you hear this man you listen to him <laughs> and then. And it's, but uh, but like the whole situation was just like this guy keeps like throwing up shit and he has like everything, like he, I mean he's the escape artist, so it's uh just, like like just a couple of the things I really hope we actually see more of him, where uh, they're just like yelling at each other like we we gotta make this deal blah 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 blah, and he's like all right get in the water find these bullets and just throws it out and then <laughs> and then uh, it's, and then basically it's just, they, right, just, oh my god and then they're huddling together and then like, male bonding <laughs> yeah, so yeah no yep. <laughs> I, one of the things that I really like, like stands out to me about a show right away that I'll like immediately be like, oh, I think this is going to be something good is if the characters have like have depth, because I feel that in a lot of anime characters are very like one tone. If you are the warrior, that is all that you can be. If you are like the class clown, that is all that you can be. It's not every anime for sure, but like I, it's just a theme I see a lot where they're just that's all you can expect from them and they're just not very interesting but in this one like the mc like he went from being you know it, well he is still he's immortal he's um <laughs> you know a really strong soldier but he also like has a sense of humor he also like loves little cuddly bears like he's a he dark wants side. to save that bear so hard uh, <laughs> but he's also like willing to to get his hands dirty to do what needs to be done but he's still like as moral as he can as he can be um, to like respecting like the girl's wishes of, of like not hurting when necessary and all that stuff. It, there's just a lot to him. And same with her. Like when she was scratching the, uh, cause she's been fairly serious. She has some comedic moments, but like when she was scratching the wolf's belly, Oh my God, that was so cute. And I was like, okay, okay. She's got other sides to her as well. And that, that's what I really look for in anime. So they, they got that in there right away. The MC's awesome. Like, like, uh, 
Oh, also, like, when he basically kind of, like, takes her word on if, like, basically, like, oh, like, like a bear won't attack somebody in its den. And he just dives right into the den. <laughs> and then, it, and then but, like, but also, I could definitely, like, uh, I, I can definitely see why when you basically, when you said, like, oh, like, Immortal, uh, Immortal, uh, what the hell is his, his I don't even know his name. Sugimoto. Yeah, Su- Sugimoto. I'm sure I will get it down very fast. But every time he just yells like Immortal Sugimoto, like those, those just those situations are just they're becoming ridiculous now. <laughs> where uh, or they, like where he first like like I said like or when he dives into like the bear den, just does it just emerges with the baby <laughs> the baby bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, what else was there? It's uh, um, also I, I don't know if he's the main villain, but he's like the current villain. Like his the current villain seems fucking ridiculous too. Where he just starts Which break one? the the guy that has like a basically a, a plate and he has like basically oh like God, skin missing yeah off. yeah and he's just he's basically just like just randomly like uh, he, I, I, he's just like randomly like like, like uh, ranting off stuff and the guy's like dude you're fucking insane like what the hell's your problem and then bites his finger <laughs> and then he's just like and then the guy's like all right shoot him it's like and he's like all right shoot and then he shoots that guy I'm like wait what the fuck is happening right now. Yeah, and, Tsurumi. Tsurumi is crazy. Dude, he's he seems pretty fucking nuts. Uh, and so I, I like I don't know where like where it's going. Like oh, th- like and we got to the we watched the third episode, and where it has like this like gigantic dude with like so, like a, a square in the middle of his forehead, which is just a very oh. weird place to have it. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know any of the backstory on that, like why that's right there in one specific point, but I'm sure that'll cover, that or that'll be covered later on. But it's like a I'll, go ahead. I don't know yet. I don't know yet to be honest with you. Oh really? Uh, oh, he, okay. He is a prominent character, so you will see him frequented throughout, and he's part of some hilarious scenes as well. All right, <laughs> sounds good. But uh, yeah, the so guy... far, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, uh, no, no, I was important. just gonna say, like, basically, Koo Brian. Like, if you guys ever have, like, have like actually free time, like, so far three episodes in, it's a solid show. Mm-hmm. The first episode, it definitely does, it does not have the comedy. It's a, it's a, uh, it's it's a, it's it's different. Second episode, like the the comedy starts coming through, but it still has kind of like those uh, um. How would you call it? It's like like serious, like a lot of serious tones, but also like, but it's done very well. It's uh like 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 they recognize like the situation like when it's when you can act, basically when you can it can be comedic, and they avoid the situations when you know you know it's it's it, it, it's not like fire force where it it just switches so hard and fast where it just doesn't make any sense and does not flow well at all. So far, I think it's it's been done like because you can you can almost tell when this this the situation is going to be serious before it happens, or you can almost like tell like when like, when it's about to be a comedic ep- like a when it's a comedic scene, and you can also differentiate between the two when in Fire Force like they can go when it's like like in the middle of like a serious scene they can basically go like comedic and then you don't know what's going to happen. It's uh. Well, I mean, I think the best way to describe it. I mean, it's basically like it not a heist because they're not stealing, but it's basically like an like an adventure slash heist show. So there'll be some comedy in it, just like it can be comedy in anything, but it's not a comedy show, at least from what I've seen so far. I wouldn't have described it as comedy. <laughs> oh, it just, just happens you to wait. be comedy in it. <laughs> oh, am I wrong? Am I totally wrong? <laughs> oh, I, I can't say you're wrong, but I will say the comedy, it goes on thick later on, so don't worry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's the, yeah. The, basically the whole thing is cool. The like from like the story that we have, it's like, this guy needs money. He's trying to find gold, and the there's an old man at the beginning of the episode, like the first episode, that talks about basically like, a way like where he knows like where there's a bunch of gold, where like a map was tattooed on 24 prisoners, and basically like that map all together is basically it shows like, the, like where the gold is, or like you know like the location of it. So basically, it's like the first, like so they're basically like trying to like get you know get the map like fully, but basically people are are like skinning the prisoners for like the parts of the map because it's tattooed on their bodies. So it's uh kind of darker. So it's it's has like some darker points. Yeah, it's it's definitely dark, but the humor the keeps it from being too dark or it keeps it from being even like brutally depressing. Yeah. Um but just you guys wait. The characters are so well done throughout the entire story because you just, you just don't get tired of them. Yeah. Um, with so many shows, you suffer from like the fatigue of okay, we've heard enough about this person or that person, or you know, this kind of force. Like you didn't have parents, so you're the bad guy. Blah blah blah. In this show, it's like everybody has reasons, like perfectly 
logical reasons for what they're doing. Now, whether or not you agree with what they're doing is a completely different point. Right. But everyone has had uh, lots of ups and downs. And one thing I really like is there's no character who's perfectly good or who's perfectly bad. It's just impossible uh, because of everything they've been through. So everybody's intertwined with one another in some way. Um, the actions that happen within the first three episodes will have an impact in the third season. So it goes to show how it's chained together. Like the story is not just ad hoc. Oh, this happened. And by the way, that has no effect whatsoever later on in the story. Like right. everything is intertwined. And I will tell you guys, uh, season two. I don't. Okay. So season one, in my opinion, is good. But it's, it's not like the prime of the show. It's not. If I were to serve you up an exemplar of the episode of what the show can be. I, I would say uh, <laughs> I would say the most recent episode from season three was a ten out of ten, but also the episode about sea otter stew. Like, trust oh, me, when you oh, guys watch so that, you're, you're gonna be like, "Dude, what was Sasha talking about?" And then when it hits, oh my! I've never <laughs> laughed that hard, just like unexpectedly. So you'll see. Um, that can't wait. And then there's <laughs> yeah. So. Season one is really good. I think it ends on a little bit of a whimper, to be honest with you. Like the last episode, it feels almost fillerish because you're like, uh, what's going on here? Because the episode before that, you're like, oh, this is intense. And then episode 12 kind of just slowly lulls you into this like goofy laid back episode. But it actually has a lot of repercussions down the road that they reference back to. And you're like, oh, so this was actually really important. I just didn't realize at the time. Season two jumps straight into the craziness. So you guys will see a lot more character development. And then season two does what the show does so damn well, which is they start giving the personal backgrounds for each of the characters. Oh, nice. Okay. And they are they are really fascinating stories. Like they, It's really gripping. So season three, the reason why I'm just so hyped was the last episode did a huge um, revelation about one of the characters. And it was done in such a way that it just it blew your mind where you're like, wow wow um my buddy called it one of the best like reveals done in anime so oh, you'll see i don't want to i don't want to like overhype everything and then you're like what the hell man but i think <laughs> you'll enjoy it just as much so the last episode in season three it was a lot of information but in a really good way and then the storytelling was just so beautiful because you're like okay you're getting a lot of backstory about a couple different characters and then this major one comes in and you're like, holy moly. Now I see. Now I see. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. So it is uh, it is just so well done. And I'm telling you guys, seasons two and three shine so much brighter than season one. And season one is good enough on its own. I'm already liking like, season yeah, one. Solid. Yeah. <laughs> just wait. Just wait. I guarantee you. Within the first episode of season two, you're going to notice a difference. You're going to be like, bro, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> so... Yeah, it'll be one of those uh, episodes where it's dark, but also just, un I mean, intentionally hilarious at the same time. So I'm glad you guys gave it a shot and you're enjoying it. Cool, Brian. We need you guys on the Golden Kamui train. <laughs> get get oh, your asses on there. How, how many episodes uh, are, are yeah, how many know. episodes are left of this season? I think it's just three. That was episode three. nine, so it's 10, nine. 11, okay. and 12. Okay. Yep. Yeah, de I definitely want to catch up like before like the last, be like before like the last. At least the last episode, just so we can do like the whole kind of like a. Um, oh, you! Summary if you it, guys everything. get to this episode, you trust me, you will come back to me and be like, Sasha, that was <laughs> probably like top ten anime episodes. Period. Oh, like, okay. Well, I'm it, it, be like, we need to talk now. We need to get our emotions yes. out now. <laughs> <laughs> it is just so well done. Um, <clears throat> but Taylor, since you're a fan of character depth, you will see that episode is the core of character depth so awesome. yeah it's everything about the show is really well done um and you guys will notice uh no one character remains the same like everybody changes throughout the course of the show which is what i really appreciate which is why attack on titan so good and all the best animes right they mm. they show the development so uh yes golden kamui is damn good Damn well, it good. sounds like there's a lot of moral ambiguity, too. I really like that in shows where you really, like you were saying, nobody's all good or all evil. I mean, everybody's, yep. everybody's been shaped by their experiences. Everybody has their goals and their motives and whatnot, whether they're good or bad. 
I mean, it's kind of up to you as the viewer to decide, but I like that. I like moral ambiguity. That's one of the things I look for in my shows. Yeah, I really Same want. Here. I really actually want to know, like, because uh, there's a lot of shows, like you know, Shonen shows, where uh, like like your their younger kids, like uh, like, like let's just say like Hero Academia or something that doesn't really have like too much of a backstory for themselves. But this is one of the shows that I really want to like to actually know, like especially Sugimoto, like what his backstory is, because I because of what we've seen, it's pretty brutal. Just kind of like the little flashes we've seen, like of like one of his best friends, of uh, that whole deal. I'm thinking, oh my god, like when we get to that thing, I just assume it's gonna be just kind of. Uh, this is a brutal ass backstory. I mean, we already kind of see like, like just the the, the guys are completely scarred up. Like where I kept thinking, like when when you first, it has like so many scars like all over it on his back and everything. I keep thinking like, hmm, is this a part of the map? <laughs> like, it, like just like how it looks. Like it, it just it looks like like has, is this guy a part of this somehow? <laughs> he just doesn't know it. Where uh, because there was like so much shit that was going on that I, like it just looked like that, but it just but uh. Right, he would definitely be like the number one that I want to know, like kind of like the backstory, just like of like of him. I actually would definitely be looking forward to it. It's uh, and then like even like the the also like the escape artist or the escape king. I want to know him. Uh, the main the main girl. I don't know how well actually kind of like what happened to like her her dad family and stuff like that. Uh, so it, it's like I, I actually can't wait. And you said like that doesn't like this stuff doesn't happen until season two. Yeah. So season two. Trust me. I, they're throwing a lot of characters at you, and yeah. season one is going to be more about the whole story and putting it together, whereas seasons two and three are about the individual characters and then how they got involved at all and also their backstory, um, which is the part that just makes the show magical. Gotcha. But you will definitely find that out. I will say this. Sugimoto, as far as his past, uh, they don't go into like some giant episode and reveal all about his past. You get it in snippets. Pieces, but that's really, fine. his character. What's that? No, no, like little pieces is fine. I'll take it. Yeah, um, but really, you get to know his character through his actions. Like there are certain scenarios that come up, and you could tell he could go this way or that way. Yeah, and he <laughs> has a very um, strong reason for going one way or the other. But um, I don't, I don't want to say too much more. Okay. But basically, like you can tell. By his actions, um, what his past was like, and basically what he's going for towards his future. So that's what I like about the show too. Like you don't, for some characters, you don't necessarily get all the background information just given to you, mm -hmm. but you can tell what they were like and what they're doing. Um, is it to stay the same in the future? Is it to further their goal from when they were younger, or is it to do something completely different? But trust me, um, many, many uh, character stories to feast on. I, I can't wait to continue the show. <laughs> like, Sugimoto, he's like, like... I feel like he could be... Like, you know, when it's all like, kind of said and done with the like, last three seasons. Like, there's a, there's a possibility of him entering, like, my top ten favorite characters. Wow. Yeah. Like, just like... I don't oh, know, yeah. His personality, just how it's... Like, how it is. Like, I don't know, dude. Like, he's just awesome. I like how... Like, he, like, this guy, like, just try... Like, he tests death. <laughs> like we're like like first with the old man where he's basically like you want to see if I'm immortal and basically just puts a gun to himself. Uh, even though I don't know if he just knew that like if the gun was on safety or some shit that could have been just a complete bluff. At the same time where he like he just like I swear he just yells to, like pump himself up like Brian I can see you being this man. <laughs> where like every time like he's about to go into some situation he just he just basically yells and pumps himself up and just by basically saying I'm the immortal Sugimoto. Okay. <laughs> Hell so, yeah, and just wait. Uh, one of my favorite characters, um, you, you'll get to know him. Like I would argue, his story is just as much, or even, uh, even more fascinating than Sugimoto's. And that's the beauty about the show. Like I still love Sugimoto, but there's so many other people I want to learn about too. Oh yeah, but yeah, Tosh, you were de you were definitely right. You would you would definitely be the escape king. <laughs> <laughs> dude i didn't say that my boy said that. okay well my bad my bad but i, I can see yeah. it where it's just like <laughs> in some situation you're in trouble it's like all right we're gonna cut a deal and already have it set up <laughs> so, <laughs> to basically just to get immunity <clears throat> that entire role yeah like the whole ensemble of characters so far is a solid like even like the villains or it, or i i'm just assuming they're villains they definitely have villain vibes <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely some people who are straight up villains, um, but like I said, it, it's it's not like just your cheesy cookie cutter villain story. Uh, there there are reasons for that. So right. just wait, just wait, baby. Get to season right. two, and then text me when you're in season two. 
uh, you'll see why I say there's some Dexter vibes in season two right away. Oh, you're gonna be like, dude, what, what the hell is this? <laughs> we'll probably be there sooner rather than later because I'm definitely like the binger out of the two of us. So I'm sure that we'll be watching and, and I'll be like, another one, another one. And I'll be like, I have to go to bed. And I'm like, do you? It's only 20 minutes. Like, what difference will it make? Like, 20 more minutes. <laughs> that 20 minutes continues good, in hours. Good. <laughs> but yeah, well, I'll, I'll definitely keep you up to date on like, what's going on. I, but I'm loving the show so far. <clears throat> but I don't believe I have anything else to really add at this point. Um, Sasha, I don't know if there's anything more you want to kind of add of like uh, the episode you just watched or like the third season of what's going on. No, I, I don't think there's much to say. Like if I say anything more, it could start revealing things. I, I don't want to spoil any of that of you for gotcha. you. So uh, okay. just just know it's. I personally think it's one of the best episodes of anime I've seen. And that stacks up to anything from AOT to Death Note, etc. It's just God damn. It was, yeah, it was it was just really <laughs> well done. So the show continually continuously gets better. And uh, I think you guys will really, really enjoy. Dude, I'm telling I... you, Sea Otter Stew, Sanka, <laughs> and then this episode, that's my trifecta of my three favorite episodes. So Sea Otter Stew, that's in the third season as well? No, no. Sea Otter Stew's like I wanna say latter half of second season. Okay. So and then what was the, the other, other one? Stu- Stank something. Stanka is like like second or third episode of season three, and then this. Okay. Most I, I don't know what this episode's called, um, but this one is episode I, nine. This was episode nine. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, all right, I'll keep those yes. in mind. But I, I don't think I have Just anything else. Wait. Anybody else? Right. Last 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 thoughts? Anything? Nope. This was week ten of the fall twenty twenty season. Uh, again, I was like the host. Thank you all for listening, watching. Um... And then thank you for uh, thank you, team, <laughs> friends. <laughs> what, what is I, I keep I, panel. panel? That's what he says. Panel. Oh God! Okay, Peasants, I keep I keep. <laughs> I, I'll stick with panel. Um, okay. But yeah, thank you guys. It's always it's always fun hanging out with you guys. R.I.P. David. Of course. <laughs> R.I.P. David. Right. Is David studying for finals? What's he doing? He is. Yeah. It's basically like uh, he's he's like I think he. He's just about finished. Like he's just about to finish up with his degree. So I think this is just powering through the final, like the finale part of it. Well, so just, in the words of a him. seemingly, I'm not sure. I can't claim transsexual character from One Piece. Gun buddy, gun buddy, David. <laughs> I don't know who this. Oh, he, he's probably not, but you know, just, Does, I said seemingly. Okay. Brian, do you know this character? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Brian. Oh, oh, you. Of course, of course. Uh, th- there's a little change that happened with the character, so sorry, Brian. Oh, hmm. Brian, by the way, check out One Piece, man. Uh, pretty much cuts out all the BS and filler and dragged out episodes of One Piece. Yeah. Hey, just just quick. Did we actually officially end the podcast now? No. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> oh, I can, I can okay. end it here though, and then we can. I, I, I'll, then I'll keep the. Uh, I can keep the stream going for a bit, so we can just kind of hang on and talk. Latom. <laughs> Latum. La- yes, okay. Latum to Fire Force. Uh, Latum intolerant. <laughs> but again, thank you for uh, was it, all the listeners and uh, and chat and the panel for joining me this week. And uh, I apologize, I had to be the stand-in host again. I am awful at my job, or at this job. Dude, so. I got the perfect way to end this. Three, two, one, let's jam. <laughs> Alright guys, that's terrible. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> Well, we have Attack on Titan coming tomorrow, so we'll see you guys then. Bye! Sasaki, yo! Sasaki, yo!